G'day and welcome in to a new campaign in Divide and Conquer Total War. Uh, we are going to be playing the Dwarves of Erebor. It was a bit of a toss up with what I went for. It was between Anduin, Erebor and uh, Gundabad. And I just felt like playing some Dwarves. I just want some stout, some stout natural sprinters uh, by my side. Uh, and uh, that's, that's how I made the decision. So, the Dwarves of Erebor. Yeah, Tetra, welcome in. What do we have? We're an infantry-focused faction, as you would assume. Uh, strong offensive units and morale. Strong enemies. Ooh, no dedicated cavalry. However, we do have access to a decent chunk of cavalry for a Dwarven faction. Probably the most access to cav that any Dwarven faction has. Uh, and we'll talk about that once we get into the game. Tetra, you support this. Dwarves. You know, Dwarves have barrels. Um, notable units, Dragon Slayers, Iron Guard, Axe Guard of Erebor, <coughs> Dwarven Catapults, <coughs> yes, uh, <laughs> Dwarven Catapults. So, the Dwarves of Erebor, our leader, King Dane the Second Ironfoot. The heir is Lord Thorin, not the Thorin you'd be thinking of. Our captain is, of course, Erebor. Under the mountain dark and tall, the king has come unto his hall. His foe is dead, the worm of dread, and ever so his foes shall fall. The sword is sharp, the spear is long, the arrow is swift, the gate is strong. The heart is bold that looks on gold, the dwarves no more shall suffer wrong. Now call we over the mountains cold, come back unto the caverns old. Here at the gates the king awaits, his hands are rich with gems and gold. The king has come unto his hall, under the mountain dark and tall. The worm of dread is slain and dead, and ever so our foes shall fall. Oh, yes, that's it. That's what I wanted. Oh, it gets the spines tingling. That's this is this is what we want. Some good dwarven action. Dwarves begin the game with only two mansions under their control, the great now rebuilt city of Erebor, and their long-standing home of uh Kiri Kir Kirkathol in the Iron Hills. I think that's I think I got that pretty close. Kirkathol. Early game. To the south of the Iron Hills lies the vast land of Lugathavuld. <laughs> this unending sea of grassland is divided into many independent realms, all vying for ultimate control. These lands would fall easily, or would fall to the might of the dwarves easily. Care must be taken, however, because the Kingdom of Dale, a close ally, and the Daratai of Lune, a bitter enemy, also are trying to occupy Lugathavuld for their own military goals. In addition to heading south to the west, the great mansion of Dane's Halls lies empty. We should seek to claim it for the glory of the dwarves. However, with the rise of King Mazog, the filth of Gundabad may seek to defile the great hall if they should beat us to it. I think they get it in the auto expand, so um, they will definitely beat us to it. Military overview. The chief lesson that the dwarves of Erebor have taken from the desolation of Smog is that the best defense is a good offense. This ethos has been drilled into the armies of Erebor, and, though and through rigorous training, they are now one of the most lethal fighting forces. Favoring maneuverability over defense, they have the deadliest of all dwarven charges, and their skill with their weapons is unmatched. Further still, the army of Erebor fields no archers or crossbows, and instead favors the lethal dwarven throwing axe. Allies from the Otokani do still fight at range, and a wise commander adopts both Erebor's offensive stance with support from the more defensive Otokani. Hmm. I don't like the idea of lethal throwing axes, because they're just garbage. But anyway, we'll use them. We'll use them. Um, special features. Otokani Hall, obviously. No cavalry, no mainstream archers. That's our special features, by the way. We don't have stuff. <laughs> <laughs> these are the special features you don't have any <laughs> you don't have cab no mainstream archers we do have some access to archers though and we'll talk about that as well Orokani Hall is cool great units we've got the Hammers of Gundabad available from Gundabad Sons of the Fallen from the Misty Mountains and Guardians of khazad if we were to make it to Moria also I think the uh, Dragon Slayer unit is available uh up in withered heath or around there somewhere it's up available up there so very hard very hard manageable cities show moves um 
course, we go for the long victory conditions. Whether or not we get there, we'll have to wait and see. This is some pretty insane victory conditions. We just finished our Northern Dunedain campaign, which was like Mordor, Isengard, Angmar, and control their capitals, which is like top of the map, middle of the map, bottom of the map, right? It's it's the whole map, let's be honest. Um, this is... What do we got? Eliminate Easterlings, Moria, Gundabad, and Angmar. I mean, it's four factions we have to eliminate for the victory conditions. I mean, Easterlings are hard. Moria, Gundabad... Gundabad and Angmar are kind of close to each other. Angmar is still pretty big. Depends on what happens over on the other side of the mountains. Moria can be quite spread out. Like, Moria can get all the way down into, like, could have sort of, you know, uh, south of Bree almost, you know. Moria can get to. So, this is quite lofty victory condition. So, we'll see how we go with that. But, without further ado, we'll get in and we'll talk through some of the uh, faction mechanics that we have access to. Long... Oh, the dwarves. So I've never done a uh, Erebor campaign on stream, at least. Um, I have done Kazadoom, which is the way I understand it. Kazadoom are the most defensive um, in terms of their armor and you know, defensive skill and lower attack. Erebor have the higher attack, higher charge bonus, but lower defense. And, I mean, low, not lower. Like, lower, not low. It's still dwarves. Um, and Ered Luin has more the, the range play with the with the pike crossbow um, combination. So, the dwarves, although similar, do play a little differently. Righto. Once again, if you've never played Divine Conquer, I do encourage you to read through this. Uh, as it says there, it will answer 80% of your questions. Um... I think the only thing that really affects us here, specifically for Erebor, is um, I think we do get a visual upgrade to our units at the blacksmith. Um, so there's that. Um, we have, I think, full access and only the faith Dunland, Bree, Harad. Yep, so we have full access to settlements. Um, I don't think we get boats. We have to get mercenary cogs. Yep, that's about right. Okay, uh, this is the law, I believe. I don't think this is... Yeah, this is just the law, so I'm not going to read through all this, but I will just scroll through. Um, if you're watching over on YouTube, you'll be able, be able to pause it and, and have a look. Um... Obviously, I always read something that's related to script information, but um, just a, a law read, we will uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay, we Gundabad goes towards everyone. Right, oh, let's have a look at our starting situation. We have Erebor, and we also have Kirkathol. Kirkathol starts with uh, some Iron Hills Maddox and Lord Thorin, our faction heir. Um, huge city with two free upkeep units, barracks, hub, pig farm, and roads. Uh, interestingly, no uh, recruitment. So that's funny because, yeah, we could have the access to units, but we can't actually recruit them. Zero so recruitment slots. Okay, that's funny. Um, so over here we have Erebor. We have King Dane, who has a unit of um, Sons of the Fallen. So we'll be definitely using him. We have Gimli. Oh. Gimli, who has uh, Axe Guard of Erebor. Um, so he's got his big old axe um, and quite a few um, bits of equipment ready new to begin with. All Hail the King. We've got Gluun. Gluun over here, um, who's also got a special ability. Stubbornness of the Dwarves is a special ability the Dwarves have. I, don't, I think it's probably the worst one. One usage, 60 second duration. 250 own army fatigue permanent, minus 750 own army fatigue temporary. Locks own army morale, rallies own routing troops. Um, dwarves don't route, right? So that's not an issue. 
So the only thing is it, it reduces your fatigue by 750 temporarily, but adds a 250 permanent. So you can like maintain being at fresh for longer or warmed up for longer. But then once you drop from that, you drop faster. So um, I think it's just not very good compared to compared to other um, other ones we have. An agent. We also have a diplomat in here. Okay, so we'll be using him quick in a quick and in a hurry. Get him out. Don't feel bad him. And we have some Erebor infantry in here. In Erebor itself, we have the Throne of Thren. Uh, building cost reduced 5% globally. That's that's probably the good one there. Now, let's talk about a couple of things we have. If we have a look over here. So. Culture Dwarven. Um, special features. Grudges. If the ancestral Dwarven homes are not controlled by any of the Dwarven kingdoms, their leaders will suffer penalties until those settlements are under Dwarven control. The settlements are Erebor, Danes Halls, Gundabad, and khazad If in the hands of the Dwarf, Dwarf kingdoms, the leaders will receive bonuses. Okay, so that's the Grudges. Um, Orokani allies in major Dwarven settlements and the various towns along the eastern borders of the map. Orokani clan halls may be built, which will allow you to train special Dwarven units from the far eastern clans. Uh, no building limitations. We have access to level 7 armor, or 1 to 6 from blacksmith, and level 7 uh, in Mithril, which is just Kazadoom. Um, just Kazadoom East, I think. And of course, we have the ring strip. Now, the other thing it doesn't say there is, and if you have a look here, for the Throne of Throne, is we can get access to Northman Archers and Dale Cav, which, although very low tier to begin with, are our only real access or fast access to archers and cavalry. Now the Dow Cav are going to be very, very important, uh, particularly in the early game. They're going to be pretty much uh, how we take a lot of these fights with the cavalry. So they're going to be very, very important. And we get those from Erebor only. Uh, we also have a pipe hall, barracks, pub, an inn, pig farm, and roads. Now, the inn, spires. We are going to be getting more spies this campaign. I have discovered, and maybe maybe most people know this, maybe not. Discovered at the end of our last campaign that spies do pretty insane culture shifts if they're sitting in settlements. So if we have like three three or four spies in a cult in a settlement, they will bring the culture up to about 80% in, in four turns. Like with no culture buildings or anything. They'll just fling up there. So we're definitely going to try and use spies a lot more to get the culture up. Uh, that will be a priority. Now, we already start allied to Dale, Ered Lewin, and khazad with trade rights as well. So, I'm just thinking about the missions we'll get. We won't get asked to talk to Dale because we're, we've already done that. I'm so, um, Dale. It's good to see you, my friend. How can we... Oh, I need to... I need to shift the uh, the sound. I need to do that. Should have done that straight away. Now they already know where one settlement is, so we can just get two hundred out of them. Acceptable, but only just until we meet again. Sound game options. Yeah, that's fine. Sound. Where are we at? This is. I have to estimate it because. Um. Because on the slider in the menu doesn't have the numbers you just gotta guess okay, that's my normal sound options right now early on strategy you can see that gundabad already control these two settlements so they control one two three four five six seven settlements so um i think i think in previous version version 4.6 the way i played it was i held it erebor and I went after all of these neutral lands out here. Now, I think I'm going to change my strategy. I think instead we're going to hold at Kirikathol. And when I say hold, it's effectively not have to hold because there's neutral lands all surrounding us. Um, and we can see easily when Rune uh, will take any of these lands. So there's, this is one big settlement, one big uh, region there. And there's another region here and then a third region. So... There's three regions here we have to keep an eye on to see if Rune are taking any of those. Now, of course, the Erebor AI gets the auto-expand with one and two down to Skarn. We don't get that as the player. 
And I think we'll do well to ignore that side and try and we're going to try and focus Gundabad. I think Gundabad are the scarier enemy. Um, are the scarier enemy. And Rune, I hope Dale will just roadblock Rune and Dwinian will roadblock Rune uh, for long enough to me deal with Gundabad and then I can turn around and kind of um, kind of like secure myself at the Misty Mountains and and uh, turn around and focus Rune. I think that's going to be our strat. Now, we are dwarves, which means we're going to be greedy. We're going to be all sorts of greedy. Now, does anyone have like a... a reduction in building costs? Let me just look through all these. I can't see any there. I know dwarves just generally have a 5% reduction. Um, there's this there's this fort that's here now that wasn't in previous versions, which I think we're going to use definitely to try and get some money okay. flowing. Do you have any reductions in ego, promising attacker, promising defender, tactician? No. What about you? Do you have anything? Healthy. I like that. Okay, nothing there. So, what we're going to do? Is we are just going to go greedy as stone workers guild, stone workers guild, and because these are already like maxed out settlements, we're just gonna we're gonna pump the taxes. I know that's not great for population growth, but right now we just need money. You know what? Just all the way up, all the way up. I just need money right now because our current standings is we're making five hundred gold, so we need to get that up. Um, and that's with the increase in taxes. Now, you cost a lot of money. Sons of the Fallen unit. We make it to there. I reckon we send them across and get free upkeep. Now, Dwarven Laborers, I don't believe we can get free upkeep for. No. The Laborers will go across as well. Probably this General. 320 gold per turn as opposed to 300. Yeah. So, what we're going to do is you three are going to go across to here. You're going to sit in this fort and save us a bunch of money. Now, that, that hasn't updated yet. Same with you. How much is... This is 475. I'm pretty sure these guys are more. 475. So you jump over to here. How much are you? Yeah, 620. Yeah, so that's... That's... Yeah, that, that made barely any difference at all to our income. But overall, we've got a, a large increase by sending him over here. So these guys are going to hang out here, I think, to begin with. And say, just save us some money. Uh, we are getting the stone workers hauled. Now, obviously, we're just going to recruit all the units we can. Which ones are the highest upkeep? Because we did them last. So do the archer and the infantry. Follow that by the cav and the matic. The matic is the... Or... Cav takes two turns, actually. Do that. Okay. Now, I don't think we'll recruit the spy yet, but we definitely will be getting the spy soon. Once we go to, once we get aggressive, we're going to recruit all the spies we can. Probably try and get another one from over here as well, um, and get them going. But unlike a lot of my other campaigns I've played that get very aggressive off the bat, uh, you, you are free upkeep right now. I think I'll just leave you there for now. Then there's any need to pull you across. Like with these troops, we're going to have a decent garrison here and we can always grab them out of the fort and, and put them across. I think we'll just leave them. Now, the other thing, we have access to this cav. We also have access to a bunch of mercenaries. Let me just jump outside the settlement for a second. Uh, we have Dale Cav, Ravenian Riders, Ravenian Hunters, and Ravenian Spearmen. So. There's a nice pool of mercenaries, and this two units of cab really do uh, bolster our army composition because we can't get cab generally. So uh, that's that's what we're going to be really using that mercenary. So I did say earlier. I think that's probably going to be the end turn. Oh, we talked to them. Can you come over there? Wait to get a mission to talk to the elves, and that's going to be it. Send the turn. 
The, these dwarves, the dwarves of Erebor, have the most access to cavalry. One, because we can actually train Dale Cav at Erebor, which neither of the other two dwarven factions can do, can, can train cavalry. They have to fully rely on mercenaries. Um, the other thing is, in our mercenary pool, we get both the Dale Cav and the Ravenian riders, and also Privateer, Privateer Cav, we can also get um, access to. So we have three mercenary Cav that we can complement our army with, which... The only cav that er uh, Ered Lewin gets are the Merchant Cav. And I think similar for Kazadun with sort of the region of the map they're in. They definitely don't get Privateer Cav, Ravenian Riders, or Dale Cav. So, um, of all the Dwarven factions, gotta love a good beard on a, on a Dwarven lady. Um, of all the Dwarven factions, we're the ones with access to most cavalry. That's very important. Abysmal accuracy. I love it. Um... Spies in my campaign. It's more like it's more like they. It's more like they than you think. Tetra, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Food acquired. Yeah, that's it. Get the snacks. Get the snacks. Settle in. Oh yeah, you, look at this beard. Look at this lovely beard. It's a wonderful beard. Look at that. Okay. So. We're kind of just going to be chilling for a little bit because we're dwarves. Role playing a little bit. We are just going to sit in our mountain and we're going we're to accumulate gold. Look at this. We're going to accumulate more gold. We're going to recruit some units and we're going to build some structures. Um, and if Gundabad comes to attack, we'll, we'll defend. But we do want to strike out. Our plan for today is probably to get Withered Heath and Witherboard. That's the plan. Um, and probably just still hold over here. Uh, did I get a mission? Talk to elves? I did not. Come on. I'm standing right here. I need to be out of the territory. Stand over here. So unlike my Northern Dunedain campaign, which we'd done, you know, mountains of things by turn, turn 60, 70, I feel like we're not going to be that far progressed. <laughs> Obviously, we have no reunification script like we did with the Northern Dunedain. Um, but uh, it's going to be a bit... Oh, here we go. What do we got? Oh, this is about the, the grudges. Kill some dragons and accumulate gold. Build some barrels. We've got some barrels, but we will be definitely getting more barrels. Yes, all these places. All these places we need to capture. Or we'll hold. It's going to circle Erebor as well. Yeah. Okay, so this is the... Ah, talk to the Woodland Realm. Excellent. 750 gold. Love it. The Dwarven Grudges. Long have the Dwarves been at war with the forces of evil, fighting hordes of goblins from the Misty Mountains, legions of Uruks from Gundabad, and the Bane of Durin in Khazadum, dragons in the Grey Mountains. Our ancient homes of Khazadum, Danes, Halls, Erebor, and Gundabad were lost to our enemies. For centuries, they have these sacred halls built by our ancestors laid in ruins, pillaged and defiled by the enemy. No more, we say. The time has come for these grudges to be settled once and for all. It is an affront to anyone who calls himself a dwarf to wait any longer reclaiming these cities. Not since the days of Thrain the Second and the War of the Orcs and Dwarves has any dwarven king had the courage to muster an army and march upon these cities. While we slew many orcs and goblins in the war, we failed to reclaim any of our ancient homes. Not until Thorin Oakenshield managed to reclaim Erebor in his quest as any dwarven city return to dwarven ownership but we have waited long enough years have passed with elders grumbling about these expeditions that should have happened long ago Balan, son of Fundan, has started an expedition to Khazadum to reclaim the halls of his ancestors once more he goes with the trust and help of the king of Erebor King Dane I Ironfist who has taken it upon himself to rally the armies of Erebor and the Iron Hills to stand against the growing danger from the Easterling and the forces of Mordor. Yet his thoughts also wander towards the Grey Mountains and Gundabad. March! March out, fellow dwarves! The time has come! Victory shall be ours! Balak Kazad! Kazad Aymanu! Here we go, that's it. We're gonna take the places back. They're still gonna grumble for a while. They're still gonna grumble for a while. Um, Anduin Vale and, and Moria. You know, now, let, let's see. Let's, let's open open the bets for um. <laughs> How long is the Anduin Vale gonna survive? 
We're, I mean, we're close, but we're not directly next to... I mean, we can try and influence Gundabad, I guess. But, um, you know, sometimes the Anduin just dies very quickly. It's happened to me more than once. Let's see how they go. Okay, we'll get up those troops. Excellent. So we've got our starting, our starting lads. Oh, construction report. Yes. Okay, more greed. Absolute greed. This is all we do here. This is greed. I mean, these two settlements are going to be our bread makers. Now, let's take this opportunity to have a look at some of our, our structures. So, barracks. We can get up to tier 3 with the army barracks. Now, the units... We don't get that many units available to us. We do get two of each, though. So, that's where we get our numbers from. Arable Infantry and Iron Hill Maddox are our starting units. So, a nice sword and board unit, 8513. Uh, quite a quite a good excellent stamina is an important element of that as well the iron hills maddox are an effective against army unit 7 and 11 um, excellent stamina as well reliable in snow so there are starting units we then get to our, our mainline units our king's axes 9 7 and 18 effective against armor so that's good as well against these orcs of gundabad we have the king's shields now this is where i start to get a little bit a little bit giggly about these dwarves look at this unit oh oh there's nothing quite like seeing dwarves behind a big shield and a and a, and a, a swift spear. 7, 5, and 23. Excellent stamina, skilled against mounts. Excellent morale. Uh, then we have the Iron Guard. Sword and board unit, 13, 6, and 30. My goodness, look at them go. Excellent stamina up. Can't be broken. Bonus uh, in the snow. Yes, these, these lads... Uh, very very strong and of course from Erebor we get available the axe guard of Erebor so Gimli's unit 10 13 8 and 22 effective against armor and of course they have the the two only two um axes I'd like to see that increase to three honestly um then be sort of on par with javelins most javelin units have three missiles I think two is just like a little bit it's a little bit you know, considering this is like their thing, you know, throwing axes is is their um, main thing for Erebor. I'd like to see that just improved, particularly for like an elite unit like Axe Guard of Erebor. Surely they could they could carry a few extra ax axes to throw throw it throw at some orcs. Um, so that is our barracks line. Now, of course, there were some other units we'll get from other um, settlements. If I go like this, barracks. Does this show? No. Um, so, of course, the, the Dragon Slayers, uh, Hammers of Gundabad, um, Khazadun units. There's a few others we will get access to. Sons of the Fallen, depending on where we are. Now, we have Rangers. Only two tiers of Rangers and only two units available. And they're both Axe Throwers. We have Erebor Axe Throwers, our sort of baseline unit. Five and four and ten. So, not bad melee stats, but ten missile. And once again, only two missiles. You know, you look at this and you go, they're going to get two missile throws off. But then five, four and ten is really what they're going to be working with. And it's not great. 152 of them though as a dwarven unit is good no, that's that's the other thing king's warriors 127 of these and they are much better so still effective against armor i think just the the armor piercing missiles yeah not the not the hand to hand uh 10 5 and 19 and 12 missile attack on those two axes so they're actually pretty decent in melee uh 10 5 and, and 19 they can hold their own and that's kind of like our that's our units because we don't have stables um, blacksmith gives us access to very good armor, but also dwarven laborers. So four, two, and nine effect against armor. Quite a good little unit. Um, and 152 of them. And that is really about it. We get the Orokani clan halls. Um, and we can get from here very important units in our armies. The black look engineers. So crossbows, very good crossbow unit. Um, so get access to those. We can't build these everywhere. These are only available in certain places. Iron Fist Hammers are very good as well. 11, 7, and 28. Ham hammer unit. And then the Stone Foot Spears and the stone and Stiff Beard Archers. Some lower tier um, lads. You only get one of each of these though, so um, certainly can't spam out those units. The other thing about this um, building is it gives two free upkeep slots as well. It's, it's pretty important. In terms of the other things, we only get a one guild structure. Whether it be castles or cities. So it's just the Warriors Guild, which is a melee weapon bonus, which is nice. Um, so we'll get that everywhere, pretty much. And the only probably main thing ports, we just get tier one. Marketplace, we can get all the way to Merchant's Quarter. Banks, we can get T2. 
here too. The Hall of Durin is in Gundabad. It's a special building there in Gundabad. We get Hammers of Gundabad from and some other traits. Um, is mines. Mines is the is the big thing. So mines for dwarves obviously make a lot more money than everyone else. 504 and 125 from tier one. This is what we want to get to. We just want to make these two settlements just absolutely milking the cash. Tier two, 1,800 plus culture increase and population growth increase. And you get to the mining complex, you're making what, 17, almost 1,800 gold plus culture increase plus population 1%. Uh, this is basically like a unique building for the dwarves. Uh, it is very, very good. Um, so that's what we're going to be beelining for in these two settlements. Really trying to get that up and running. Would like to have like this, uh, gee, there's such a long time recruitment. I wonder whether we go for Gundabad early here. Come over. I mean, I was saying now we're going to be greedy, but let's let's send this guy over. Talk to the elves. What is it you wish to discuss? You hold us at ranks very well. What else do you have to say? 400 gold, thank you. It's good to see we good day to you. Uh, and then head for the Anduin. Have it. We'll, we'll pull this guy out. I'm just hesitant of going too early because I really want to get these mines up and running. Um, is he only making? We have to be. We, got, we are gonna have to be greedy here. This, this is the reality. Let's see. But that's pretty much overall for, er for overview for Erebor. Um, not as you as as many script events and things like that as there was for Northern Dune Dime. But you know, if we're gonna compare everything against that, we're gonna fail because that has everything basically the Northern Dune Dime campaign. It was a blast, um, and uh, none of the other campaigns really have the the depth that that one has. This so is some more infantry. Now remember, we do have that big chunk of mercenaries to grab as well. Um, now I just want to check. I think the mercenary pool here. One, two, three. Ravenian hunters looks like they've been grabbed. Yeah, this is the same mercenary pool. Okay, so we we'll definitely want those cav. You know what, get a spy. Let's let's go have a look what's going on. Make some decisions from, from from some intel. I think this is an, a campaign where there is merit in just holding. Just holding for a little bit until we get these mines up and running. Because then we can we can pretty much do whatever we want. Keras under Keras under attack already turned five. Good. Osgiliath as well. Oh, well we're going to be too far away from Gondor to help them. This game, this is not going to be a a go save Gondor campaign. Um, we are too far. We have the war in the north to contend with. Okay, so can you go wander up here and see what's going on? So Witherboard has small garrison right now. Even if we just go kill this general, that'd be good. Um, and we'll see what's in... I think the thing that scares me is I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure Gundabad start with a big starting army. Um, maybe even a couple of stacks. Uh, to check the fog of war immediately after turn yes, two or okay. turn one whatever it is but i think they start with a, a big chunk of troops and i just don't want to meet like a full stack army on the field uh, i'd rather fight them you know i'd rather them come to erebor fight a defensive battle here and then immediately um strike out that's that's kind of the hope but if they're not gonna come I saw it. March. If they're not going to come, then no then we'll have to probably go okay. ourselves. We've marched our limit. Hmm. Something to investigate, my lord. It's not making enough money right now.
full stacks of pancakes. I prefer to meet that on the dining table. Well, if it was full stacks of pancakes, we'd be marching out right now. We'd just be on our way. Oh, yes. Gimli. Gimli's got Hon. And what a glamorous Hon she is. Maybe it's short for honey. Maybe that's just like, you know. Hun? Hun. It's not Hon. Hun. Hun. Come here, Hun. I mean, that, this is really... This is a great name because, you know, you end up calling your, your significant other Honey anyway, right? So... It's just, it's just cutting out the, the middleman, or the middle dwarf in this case. Uh, let's have a look at our family tree. Owls is, okay, we got quite a family tree. Um, there you go. Um, so... We got Glowen and Gimli on one side. All, all, all married now, so that's good. Um, and we got King Dane and Lord Thorin on the other side. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, what's what's going on up here in the Withered Heath? And as an Argo general up here, um, looks like they've. In under attack? I don't know. It just hasn't been repaired. I'm pretty sure they started with it, so they didn't have to fight for it. Can you get? Yeah, you can stand there and get information on both. That's that's what we want. Now, you cost three twenty. Um, be better off going here. That'll do them today, sire. Can't get any more troops. No, we're, we're eight turns. Eight turns from getting another two. That would make a big difference. Also, we've got two over here. However, they would be... I think we get two available, so that will be counting up to two. It's not like we're losing recruitment time right now. It is It is counting up to two. Let me just check that. Yeah, it is two available from tier one barracks. So it will be increasing the recruitment pool still, even though we haven't recruited them yet. Okay, come down here. Find the Endon Vale. Talk to those. Yeah, I mean, even if we just start sort of like a... Even if we don't plan on holding it, if we just take it and kind of see, see what happens, I think it could be good. I want the mines. And we need to get the Builders Guild up because the mines cost a lot and they... They take a long time to build. So without the builders guilds, if you just went and built the mines, I think you'd be looking at sort of like what, like forty turns of building. Okay, took the Indian Vale, and it'd be very, very expensive. What is it you wish to discuss? Okay, trade rights. Let's just get that going first. It's good to see. Very well. Give me some extra gold. Four hundred. Possibly a mistake. Well, that seemed fruitful. Farewell. Excellent. Come up here. Yes, sir. And sell some map information to Gundabad before they find out where Erebor is. Okay. Like we just have a look at this. Where is it? Mines. Six turns, ten turns, fourteen turns. So it'd be twenty-four, thirty turns of building, and four thousand five hundred, eight thousand five hundred, twelve thousand three hundred seventy-five. Um, yeah, like we just need to reduce that. Already, we've taken this down to uh, was it four thousand five hundred and six turns, two thousand nine hundred twenty-five and four turns, and that's not even with the tier three yet. So. Like because the numbers are so large on these, you just it's such a big advantage to get the the guild houses up. And we can get both of these both of these settlements can get the get those large uh, mines, really good mines. Checking along this border, we don't see any enemies there yet. If we did see an enemy there, I'd be very concerned. Hi, Lord. Okay, you just jump in here. Like we could send um one of these over here I as well, think. honestly. 
that would save us a little bit of money. Move out. And then send these I two will. to here. My king. Yeah, let's just do that. That saves like 20 extra gold or something. How much do these cost? 260. That just that just saves us an extra 40 gold. It's not bad. I'll take it. You're getting a tattoo, taking streams, taking your mind off the stabby sensations. Oh man, you never struck me as a tattoo kind of guy, Tetra. That's cool. I'm not really a tattoo guy myself, but I can I can respect a nice tattoo, particularly if it's if it's well done. Yeah, it's very very tasteful. Um, he's costing a lot actually. How much is he costing? 545. Ooh. How many turns is it to get the pipe pool? Two. I wonder if that'll be reduced to one with this. I think we get this and we might just grab the pipe pool first and then go to the mines because that's a lot of money. Uh, 545. Yes, it's effectively a mine. Um, so I think we'll get this and then we'll go pipe pool into mines just to get that free upkeep. And then we can also recruit these units. So that's the, the path we'll go for that one. Um, we're still not seeing any action here, but if we leave our free upkeep right now, we're gonna go negative income. So we kind of just have to wait. As much as I as much as I hate doing it, I think we're just gonna be we're just gonna be waiting until the mines get up and running. Um, which I think is the one campaign I can get away with it on. It's the we're being greedy. We're being the greedy dwarves. We're sitting in our mountain, the world's burning around us, but that's okay because we're digging deeper. That's what we're going to do. This is your fifth tattoo. First with color. Wow. What is... It's a spy? Okay. Rarely do you see spies on the map. I smell your fear. You spell my fear? Uh, that means he's gonna see where he's gonna see where um what lies he's gonna see bring? where Erebor is. I was gonna ah uh, dang it, they're not gonna give me four hundred gold. Yeah, no, I have to try and get two hundred gold from him. That sucks. Um, if that spire hadn't gone there, we would have got four hundred gold. Ah, I didn't know if he was in range. He should probably. I should have thought that he would have been. Oh well, we'll get it next time. Not. No the units, and there's been no action yet up in the north. Everything's calm, peaceful. Okay. Um. Oh, still making marginal money. I mean, I could have not recruited those units straight away, and that would have been making us even more money. Uh, without the upkeep costs. Maybe I should have done that, maybe I should have held off. That seemed very passive though, and if we'd been attacked, I would have, you know... <laughs> wouldn't have lived that one down, would I? That's their spy dying, I think. Sounds like a, a cattle being slaughtered. Oh, 2,000 gold. That's actually incredible. Uh, spy executed. Yeah, public execution. That's right. What do you think this is? Okay, so now you'll give me 200 gold. But do not expect much. Do not think goodbye. Do we have a mission to talk to anyone right now? No. So let's head over here. Because there's the goblins Aye, and uh, Angmar, which are probably within distance to trigger the, the mission for him. We just need to keep farming up gold as much as we can uh, with that diplomat. Okay. But we'll just keep moving this quick because there's nothing else we're doing. Even though we are on 15,000 gold right now, um, yeah, if we moved all those troops out of free upkeep, like, just our faction leader himself is 640 gold. Like, we'd, we'd be pretty much even money just on moving him out. So, we we really can't afford to move anyone out right now. We're just chilling. Okay, Moria. Fantastic. So, that is down here. Awaiting your command. I can't reach him this turn. I'll continue tomorrow, sire. Still not seeing any movement here more troops that's okay as long as they're not like a, a full stack i'm i'm pretty confident taking him I mean, four turns on these as well I mean, we could wait to get those couldn't we that that would really increase the strength of our army 
way to get those. Or maybe I need to leave them behind to defend, actually. Actually, they're going to have to stay behind to defend. We need to leave something back. Because we'll leave Gimli back. Yeah, we'll leave Gimli back. Have you got any traits where you've been sitting here? Raven, Averibor, Thorns, Thor's Crit Key. That Raven, Averibor is probably not that useful on you. I could... I'll probably pass it off to one of these generals as they go past. Um, probably this lad. I don't know. Um, yeah, he's already got one line of sight, so we'll give him the Ravens of Erebor as well, and he'll get plus like plus three line of sight. That'll be pretty good. Okay. We gotta be of service. Okay, mine's coming up in Erebor, and we'll get that pipe hole. Hopefully it'll be a one-turn build um, in Kirkathol. Okay. So over here. One turn. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's going to save us a ton of money. And we can also recruit more units there then. And then over here, what do we get down to? 2,475 and three turns. Um, now wait wait till we get to the higher tiers. Remember that tier three was going to cost us 14 turns and 12,375. Um, it's going to be nowhere near that now. It's going to be like six turns. 60, or no, like five, uh, seven turns. 50% decrease. Yeah, that's going to be very good. Now the other thing... That I haven't mentioned, where is it? I'll find it here. Is the pleasure line. The feast hall actually reduces building costs by 10%. An additional 10%. Now <laughs> I could I could get the feast hall and that'd be ultra greed. Ultra greed. I think we we'll go for the mines now. We'll get the mines going um, so we can start moving troops out. But that's that is ultra greed levels right there to get the to get the feast hall as well. I mean, we may after we get the mines up, but yeah, this is this is the greed's the, the greed is there in the in the dwarf. You can see it. And I love it. I love that the option is there just to be uber greedy, uh, if you want to. Yeah, still, still nothing. Where are we? You're like, watch this. Just if I just move these guys out. So what are we at? Sixteen oh eight six. Fourteen five. Just moving them out, we're going negative income. Just off, just off these four units. So this is why um, I think there is merit in in just chilling out. Keep getting our money from the diplomatic missions. Is there something that uh, no, not trade rights with them. We will just get the four hundred gold, and we'll get the seven fifty from we have no the mission. Now I want to head north to try and get Angmar next. Because the issue is, if I go south, you sometimes get uh, the mission to talk to the High Elves, and you can't get there fast enough um, because you can't go through the mountains. But the game doesn't detect that you can't go through the mountains. So, because there's a settlement here. So, if you go head north, um, you try and get Angmar and then get the High Elves in the diplomatic mission um, ordering. Um. More rum at the feast hall. Yes, there will be. There'll be there'll be more there. Hey, Mr. Gambit, welcome in. Four hundred ninety-eight days you've been following Mr. Gambit. Wowzers! 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 So. I think once we get these two structures up, at least the two tier one mines, I think we'll have enough money to be able to move out. We can recruit those mercenaries as well. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot, it's a lot of cash that we lose. Crazy, how is it? I'm, I'm well, mate. I am very, very well. Currently on holidays, which is why I'm streaming during the day on a Tuesday, when I would usually be at work. A remnants of Angmar. Perfect. This is what we wanted. So we're just manipulating these diplomacy missions uh, the best that we can. 
to get around to here. High pull is done. So he's now free upkeep. Excellent. But because we have one, two, three, that means we can get these two as well for free upkeep. Grab those. Uh, check the borders. Still nothing's being taken down here. Even Dale haven't taken anything yet. Um, let's look at then the mines. Yep, tier one mines. Get that going. And we're close. We're close to being able to, to march out. I just want to go now, but well, I know it's the wrong decision. Love a holiday? Yeah, it's, it's excellent. I do love my holidays. Yes, my king. What do we got here? No, like, faction leader or faction heir. I'd love to, like, pick off a... Like, a cust couple of custom generals if they came over in fairly low numbers. Already that. See, look at that. Just that pipe wall being built is already saving us a ton of money. As long as we're kind of neutral. I just want to be neutral on the, the income. Because when we go to war, we'll lose troops. Um... We'll, make, we'll gain territory, so we'll make money that way. But I just want to be at least neutral on the income, not losing money when we go. Losing money as dwarves just feels feels wrong to me, you know? You confused me at the stream notification at first. Got some stuff to do. Sure, mate. Sure, Gambit. Love having you here. Feel free to uh, get some things. I just have my voice in the background. That lovely... Lovely... Australian voice. I think it's grating when I hear myself. Now the question is, do we send these two across? I think we do, because we still don't have any enemies here. So these two need to go across and to defend Erebor. Because they're going to need to be there as a defensive force. Same with these two. What's the elvish word for friend? Tetra, thank you so much. Gifting Mr. E Gambit a, uh, a sub. 31 gifted subs down the channel, Tetra, etc. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Absolute legend. It's a relaxing voice. <laughs> Let me not change it then. I'll, I'll leave it as is. I'll leave this one untouched, you know? Okay, there's Latash. Keep working on that one. Okay, the mines are almost up. One turn, and this will be two turns on these mines. I can't close just taking some time here just taking some time get ourselves set up oh, look at that increase in income there Whoa. i think once these other troops arrive from kirikathol then that's pretty much the go time because we've got troops left to defend let's kill this still under attack how far away are they Aye, three turns Move out. get marching march them no farther today Okay, so we got one lot of mines up. Let's just immediately go for the second tier. So 10 turns. No, look, look at the difference. Here you can actually see. So it would have taken 10 turns, 8,500 gold. It's going to take five turns, 4,675 gold. Such a such an important thing to get those guild houses up um, early. Okay, we got these two. I'm not going to recruit them right now. I'm just going to wait because I don't have free upkeep for them yet. These two though I do. So get those two training. Proposition for us. And I'm only getting 400 gold from the um, map information, but you hold us it's 400 gold, you know. Well, then. It's 400 gold I didn't have. And at the moment, I just need money to invest yes, into sir. mines. I'll continue to 750 from the mission. Here, okay. I am relying on that mercenary pool still being available. 1,000. Next mine's going to be built this turn. Dig deeper. Dig deeper. There's nothing about the dwarves of Erebor digging too deep, you know. There's no there's no Balrog here. We'll deep we'll dig as deep as we like. <laughs> we'll keep digging. Just dig deeper. Ah, uh, so I love, I love some dwarves. I love, this is just relaxing. Talk about a relaxing voice. You know why I go relaxing voice? Because I'm playing a relaxing campaign. This is great. Just playing as dwarves, hanging out in my, in my, in my mountains. I mean, it's like, 
This is no stress at all. We're just hanging out. Yeah, build some more mines. Yeah, what's it say? High concentration of metal deposits. By predicting the path of the seams through the earth, new tunnels are dug out from the original mines, ensuring that nothing is missed. Nothing is missed. Not a not a skerrick. Not a skerrick is missed. We're gonna dig it all. Oh, great. Great stuff. Um Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you're there. You keep running around. Did we get a mission to talk to the high elves? Okay, we'll see. Okay. Um, yeah, we got that building. Excellent. Right. All right. We're close. Close to marching. And uh, hopefully that mercenary pool is still there. We'll get to have a look at our Sons of the Fallen on the field with our faction leader. He'll be leading the charge. I think we'll def we will leave Gimli in Erebor to defend. Um, just because I kind of need a good unit there in case they ignore the the army and press around the side. Talk to the High Elves. Perfect. My lord. Down here. Yes, sire. Today's journey is over. Gundabad and Woodland Realm are at war. Okay. Okay, this is kind of like a bit of a ghost signal for us anyway. Uh, because that means this settlement is under siege. I mean, uh, if Legolas is in there, he's probably dead. Man, they had three three units in there. Come on, elves. Uh, that's Aye, not good. Aye. So these two we are going to be no going to defend. My king. You lot. Grab you two now. Um, still no enemies on this front, so we will Aye. march them across. King. Move out. What are we going? To today, yep. Okay. I love I, my liege. Okay. Can you just. I need to do some management here. Come to here. Now, let's jump into their army and can you give them some of your... What's this? Plus two public happiness, plus one to troop morale. Um, definitely give Raven of Erebor over to this guy. Because Gim Gimli will keep getting traits while he's sitting in Erebor, so... We can just palm them off and basically farm other ones. Um, how many has he got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, musician plus one to troop morale seems like something I'd give to the general. So let's give that. Give that to King Dane. And. Thoral's key, one renown, one acumen. Probably someone who's going to govern, so give him to this guy. Okay, so we'll palm off those three. Something that I know I've been criticised in the past for not doing, managing retinues as well. I'm going to leave Gimli with all his all his stuff, because I still want him to be strong in a battle. But he can he can gain some more traits here while he's governing. That won't be an issue. So I then so. jump back I, my liege. into there. Now, yeah, what's our income looking like? Yeah, Ford, it's dropped because we have this light out and we're going to pull out more next turn. My king. In fact, can you get in for this one turn? Yeah, you actually get in there because he'll cost a little bit more money. And oh, he's governing, which actually makes less money, uh, interestingly enough. Might pick up a couple of traits, though, on the end My turn, king. so we'll do that. Okay. Now, we're we're heavily relying on Dale here. Dale has to has to hold well against Easterlings. We we realistically have no defenses against Easterlings in Kirkathor. We have the general, um, and that's it right now. Because we don't have the builders' hall, we can get a garrison structure up pretty quickly. I think like three turns on the tier one. 
So that's good. Also want more spies if I can get them. I sire. March. Running across the You could probably no go to here. Today, you could go to there as well, actually. Right. So what are we taking with us? This is gonna be the question. Some more units. Now we've got two mines currently in construction, right? Yeah, so that will bolster our income again. See, right now we are losing money. Aye, Lord. We're gonna get some lads into free upkeep in a moment. So Honor. you're not coming. Now I think we'll leave behind Honestly, the Northern Archers, because they can defend Erebor very well. Um, and maybe a Matic and an Erebor Infantry. Marching now. My king. Oh, and there's only one day. Uh, so I was hoping we'd get more. And this is the same pool, isn't it? Just the one, just the one Dale Cav. Uh, Dale scooped up those Ravenian, um, the Ravenian riders. Um, that's a shame. Okay, well, we'll definitely grab him. I've got another two coming across, and another two. I think that's enough. I think you two need to go. How far away are we from more units here? One. How many free upkeep do you have? One, two, three. Aye. Yeah, so. My king. Aye, Lord. Jump into here. Aye. You jump over here. Aye. Forward. And then these two My can king. go into that fort. And they can be able to get across here if Airbrawl is under under attack. Kemeth Bryn is being... Oh my goodness, Kemeth Bryn, there's... There's a lot of lads here around Kemeth Bryn. A lot of, lot of goblins and Angmarans want these Rudar, men of Rudar, that are actually... Men of Rudar that are neutral, which means they are actually fighting against the evil. I mean, they're not actively fighting for good, but... They are fighting against the evil, you know? You can get behind that. Okay. Let me march north. March to glory. We'll rest Two turns. Overnight. What's the income situation? We're losing 500 a turn. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. And we're going to get these two into free upkeep. Um, we're going to get some mines going. So I'd say we are even right now. So this is what I wanted. I think we've gone as soon as we could have. I would have liked a bit more um, mercenary units. But we're just going to have to deal with what we have here. Yeah, I have to deal with what we got. Also, another spy would be good. We can grab that from Kirikathol. We need to build a, a spy house, but I think the mines are just more important right now. Chaotic neutral? Yeah. Chaotic neutral uh, Rudarans that are not take, not picking a side, and they'll fight anyone who comes near them, but they're not picking the, the evil side. Yeah. Okay. Get another Northman Archer. The Northman Archers are very good at defending Erebor. Um, the unlike most settlements, Erebor has a good shooting platform. Uh, they can fire off, a bit like uh, Esgaroth and Latash. The archers can actually fire forward pretty well. We march no we go to there. Today. How many turns for more units are we? Eight turns. Yeah, that's a while. Still nothing on this southern side. Actually, surprised that. Even Dale hasn't taken this one yet. That's that's a bit of a surprise. Okay. Everyone one turn away from mining network. Aye, my liege. Can we book to the elves service. this turn? Yes, sire. Aye, sire. Aye, my lord. Yes, sire. Aye, sire. Today's journey is over, sire. Okay, we're trying to talk to the elves. I did want to try and get a mission to take one of these two settlements. Um, know, might not happen. Oh, more mercenaries. Yes, Ravenian riders. Join the join the cause. Perfect. Okay, 
That actually makes me feel a lot better, getting getting that additional cab unit. Um, Witherboard, we might just take Witherboard, Witherboard, honestly. Kill this general, and then loop back around and take a Nazanar. A Nazanar is the one we want, really. Um, it's a much more defendable, because this hasn't even got walls yet. I mean, technically it has walls, you have to siege it, but it doesn't actually have walls on the battle map. Can you reach it there? You can. So just grab the one ram, because it doesn't matter. Pretty sure it doesn't. Oh, grab three just in case. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm pretty sure it's not walled. This this tier of dwarven settlement um, requires you to siege, but then doesn't actually have any walls. At your service. Um, you just have a look over here. Can't see anything coming that way. Yeah, just stand here again then. Get vision on that. Tattoo finished. You must be must be a small one. Must have been a wee tattoo. Aye, sir. You gotta be of service. Okay. We are losing... Oh, what happened to... I guess because we recruited that cav. Close, though. One more turn. One more turn. Oh, look at the income now. Three and a half thousand. It's just jumped up. Skyrocketed. Now, Gimli will be leading an army at some point. But for now, he is the stout defender of Erebor. Uh, after all, he does have the axe guard of Erebor. So, it stands to reason that he is he's defending the mountain. I ah, just can't make it there this turn. Oh, that's frustrating. Come on, guys. Yeah, surely... I lord. <sighs> oh well. That'll do him today. One sir. square away from getting there. I sir. Either way, we're now positive income. And we're gonna be even closer now next turn. Uh you're not growing. Can you just dip down to high? I, I still do want you to grow, even if it be slowly. Mining complex. Seven turns, six thousand eight hundred. I mean, yeah, this is what we need. Straight in for the mining complex. Let's get it done. You picked up any other... You got mining knowledge. That's nice. That's a 10%. A lot. It's more than 9%. Okay, let's talk to the elves. Lord. You have a proposition for us? This seems quite another proposition for us then. Oh Dummy 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 dummy. Um no. We'll talk to him next turn. Farewell then. We get we get the mission. Uh I do want to talk to them next turn. Is there a fort here? Yeah, just come in, we'll talk to them next turn. Um on our way probably over to the Dunedine. Uh, because we should have taken the settlement first. I, my liege, leading the men with honor, sire. Goodness, I haven't saved yet. Should I? Let's let's chuck a save in. Um, what do we got? Erebor, um, battle. Yeah, what do we got here? This is our first little fight. It's a standard general, the mountain guard. Very good. Uh, they do have an archer. Nothing else coming in to defend, so... No issues here, really. We'll jump in, and we'll get to have a look at some of our units. Yeah, no walls. No walls. So this is the, of course, the Sons of the Fallen. Excellent little unit. Love to see them with their, their large shields. I mean, just this is our, our faction leader here. Um, in the red with the red shield. Got to pick him out. I just, I could look at the Sons of the Fallen all day. I mean, they're kind of in the same category as um, Knights of the Silver Swan, you know. I mean, just look at. Them. From, from head to toe, covered in, in plate, big shield, big spear. I mean, the spear's not even 
Look at this thing. It's like a, it's like a sword on the end of a spear. It's not even just a spear. It's a, it's a, it's a sword on the end of a spear. I mean, they're covered in the back as well. I mean, you look, they've got armor on the back. Though, but they look so good. Our, our standard bodyguard unit. This is the uh, Dulin's Guard. Dulin's Guard, 15, 6, and 34. Can't be broken. Excellent stamina. Very nice unit as well. As you can see, they um, are covered in armor as well. And that's our standard. Yeah, so the faction leader doesn't have a custom... Um, custom model on the battlefield because he's yeah, no custom one for King Dane. Ironfoot. We have our uh, laborers, our blacksmith workers. They got their picks. The miners. Picking it out. Get a uh, big melon lover. Welcome in. Erebor has fallen in your campaign. Snowwalk's going crazy. It's the end times. Uh, well, not here. Not here. Uh, we are just starting our campaign against against Gundabad, and we will be taking the hammer to them. We got our, our Ravenian riders, our Dale Cav, very important parts of our army. Probably keeping them in this army. They won't be doing a lot in this in this fight because it's a settlement battle, so they'll just probably chill out at the back here. Um, who else have we got? We got our Erebor infantry. Now these ones have got an armor upgrade. I just want to see is that the upgraded. Yeah, so this is the unupgraded look for the Erebor infantry with the no armor upgrades. You can see that they've kind of got more leather armor. And then you go over to the, uh, this is the upgraded model. You can see they kind of have more of a almost chain um, all over their body, chain link armor. Um, so that's the, the armor upgrade on those. We've got our Iron Hills Matics. Uh, so basically a direct upgrade to the laborers. Big old, big old Maddox. Um, they kind of look like they have that, that upgraded look as well, although they're not. Um, armor 7, Armor 7, yeah. Uh, I think that's everything in our army that we have to, to look at for now. So, as I said, we don't need any rams. Now, we're just going to basically surround them as much as possible. Maddox seemed really good even in the late campaign because armor piercing. Yeah, you just have so many better options though, late campaign. Like you have the, um, the King's Axes and their mainline units. So yeah, you just have a direct upgrade to the Iron Hills Maddox that you don't you don't need them late game. Uh, they are their stats are the defense is not high enough. Late game they, they get torn up. Even early game you'll see here um, they they don't do that well. Now units that we don't care about as much are the um, laborers. So we'll send them in first, and they'll have some support behind them of course. But they'll take the initial brunt because they are armor piercing. They will trade decently. We'll send in the the laborers um, and probably backed up by some stoutier dwarves. Just you know, inter intersprinkled to mixed in there. Um, and then probably up the middle, we'll send the two generals. They can they can get some work done. Um, and I think that's about it that we're all going to be that we're going to be using. We'll, we'll keep everyone else kind of in reserve. That should be enough. There's not there's not much here. Okay, so can you just start marching up? Raiders, scouts, mountain guard. So can you attack the mountain guard? You go for the scouts, uh, and then this side. Go, go, go. What's the deal with Ravenian mercenaries out east? I mean, yeah, you just get Ravenian mercenaries in, in all of all of Ravenian. So you get the riders, the hunters, the spearmen, um, and then you get uh, the privateer. I'm just sort of tanking the, the archer shots at the moment with these guys because they got they won't take many won't take much damage. Stand to here and sort of tank the archers. Um, you get Privateer Cav and Privateer Axemen further out as well. Sort of all through Ravenian. So there's, there's good mercenary pool all through Ravenian. Who are the, Re the Ravenians? 
Oh, they're, they're, um, sort of like the people of that, the men of that area. Um, so, yeah, like, yeah, they're, they're just the people of that area. Just like, you know, the Rudarans are the people of Rudar, um, or whatever. Um, I think in the lore previously they were, um, kind of, kind of part of Gondor at when Gondor was at its peak. Um, I'm sure someone will, will correct me on that in the YouTube comments if I'm wrong, but... Pretty sure they're kind of like part of um, part of Gondor at, at its peak. Um, they're kind of united all across the Ravenian as well. And then as Gondor kind of petered out, um, that was sort of like the, the part that went first. Get in there, they're firing at you. Don't let them fire. Okay. Get in there, get in there, go, go. Get in there, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, now while we have them pinned, let me get into here. Go, go, go. Go hit these mountain guard in the back, because they will beat our, our laborers pretty handedly, but the laborers will trade trade up well. It's impressive if Gondor reached that fight. I'm pretty sure they did. Um... Can you get into here? Can you get into here? There's raiders. You push in. Doesn't need to push in a little bit. Get, get into them. Get him in the rear. We've got the numbers advantage. We need to make sure they feel that numbers advantage. Now I'm just concerned. I just want to make sure that the general is kept well back. Um, because the mountain guard are pretty, pretty chunky. Now this is just going to give a bit of a, a bit of a highlight of how strong Gundabad is because we got these guys surrounded. I mean, admittedly they're fighting in the square, so they're not going to rout. But Gundabad are good. They are the strongest of the orcs. And early game, it's 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 a it's a brawl. Like even the snow orc archers. Just just have a look at this stuff. Six and ten snow orc archers. Like that's insanely good. When you think about our mainline infantry is eight and thirteen. And their archer, their baseline archer is 6 and 10. Like, compared to 8 and 13. Like, look at the, the Snow Orc Raider, 9 and 12. This is an Orc unit. 9 and 12. They're effectively on par. That's without, actually, that's more attack than my Erebor infantry. One less defense, the Snow Orc Raiders. So, just when you, when you think about Gundabad, they are very, very good. Um, they have very strong units. Can I come to here and go defensive? That's better than human infantry? Yeah, it is. It is, it's, it's better than Gondor Militia. Um, it is very, very strong. And this is the, like the archer. 6 and 10 on an archer. Like, that, and that's their baseline archer. Not even their... Not even their their mid their mid range black shield and his black shield archer units are uh, are even better than that. Yeah, so we pretty much pushed through. Can you get further over? Aren't you in a, in the mix here? You know, these raiders go. Okay, we've almost got them. Yeah, you need to go get involved. So. Um, could you come in through here? Let's pop the stubbornness of the jewels once. Keep us kind of fighting well. Even though it's a net loss. Okay, so we almost got them. They're going for them. Okay, can you get back over here now? Over this side. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Push in behind. Let's go. Get him surrounded again. Okay, everything. Fight the mountain guard. Let's go. I mean, 
how are we going? We've lost 19% against three units. And yeah, obviously we couldn't charge them with the cab, but you'd think as as dwarves you'd be able to take these guys, but man, they are brutal. Okay, hit him again in the rear. The Maddox. They they wiped out that. Here we go. That was a terrible charge, but there we go, that's a bit better. There we go, get in there. Nice, 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 nice. Good. Even that charge, it didn't even kill any on that charge. I think they're pretty good charge, haven't they? Seven charge, yeah. Alright. I mean we've got our our effectively our best unit here, Sons of the Fall, and, and they are still struggling to punch through these mountain guard. Even just the I think most of the raiders are gone. Cody Atkins, I don't believe Iranian was under Gondor's control. It was a separate kingdom and ally. Ah, yeah, eventually faded. Lots of them migrated to the Andaman Valley area, and some of those re-allied with Gondor to become the Rohira. Yeah, something like that. I, I, I was just trying to recall back to reading the the um, the the footnotes, not the footnotes. Can't think of the word. The appendices, the appendices of of Lord of the Rings. Um, I remember reading about the... Oh, gee, that's good. Yeah. Well, that was mine for a second. I'm not sure. That, I think that they were very closely allied if, if they weren't a part of Gondor. Almost maybe as like a, a, like a tributary state, almost. 17 mountain guards. They are just fighting to the death. Goodness. I mean, yeah, they're going to fight to the death, but still. They're inside their capture point. Taking a long time to put him down. Aragorn may have taken it back after the fall of Mordor. Yeah, I think Aragorn, I think in the fourth age, pushed towards the Easterlings. So, like, pushed east. You know what scared me when I encountered is, uh, are those orcs that throw ballista bolts with their arms at you. I don't know what you're talking about, big big melon lover. So we pretty much traded evenly there. That's even after healing. So after healing, my goodness, after healing it was pretty much an even trade. We actually lost more units, um, which is insane to think when we just surrounded there, surrounded them. Like normally an army unit surrounded will fall pretty easily, but man, 115 arable infantry, sons of the fallen. They were mainly mainly fighting the uh, the bodyguard. Only at 34. Durin's guard, 36 kills at the end there when they were just cushioned by all the other units. They were fine. Even the Iron Hill Maddox then, when they came in on the with the rear charge on the mountain guard, lost 34 and only killed 20. And they should be trading up into them with the effect, effect against armor. Goodness me. Gundabad is so strong. They kill... Throw model piercing javelins that kill multiple orc dwarves. Gundabad units. I'm trying to think of their their units. They have the orc avengers. They're not. They don't throw axes. A proud victory. We have I'm, I'm trying to think. Half trolls? Oh, they have half trolls. Yeah, I forgot about them. I forgot they have half trolls. I think they do have half trolls, don't they? Uh, we will just occupy. Because we will be planning on taking this. We don't want to kill the population. Um, Brawl's pick can go. Now. We will be keeping this. Oh, there's there's a there's a butchery. Um, grab a spy. Oh, where's my spy? Yeah, my spy's there. Um... Now, we're going to immediately go. We really want an Azanar. We just want to kill the general there. Um, we're not going to build anything here because I think we're going to lose it again. Oh, we can't get the spy. I have to get the spy here. Get the spy. And... We're going to leave behind the laborers. Yeah, leave behind the laborers. Now, I know 
Will low taxes save it? He'll stop it from rebelling. But I think we're probably going to get hit here reasonably soon. Um, if a... <clears throat> if a settlement is taken with a spy inside, does the spy die? Cody Atkins, I'm probably directing that at you. Don't think they do, do they? If a spy is inside a settlement and it and it's I don't think they die. I think they just get like ejected out. Um <laughs> Don't don't sell yourself short. Don't want to lose this guy. Um because we definitely need him here to transfer to get the public order going. What I might do is just have a look. On my way. I think we're fine for a turn. Just jump in there and increase the culture a little bit, and then we'll pull him out next turn. Okay. My king. My lord. We go talk to them again next turn. Get six hundred. Yeah, we're making gold again because we lost troops. Two turns to build that. No, let's not. Let's not invest money in this. Not just yet. You've had spies survive in that scenario, but I don't know the mechanics. Okay. Because Cody Atkins, you and I well know now, after our lesson on spies, <laughs> spies are very important. Little did I know how important they were. So we've got a spy now. You are coming straight up to here. Yeah, so I don't actually want you to stay Something in there. To I didn't check what it was prior to it, but I mean, it's gone up 5% in, in... It went up 5% in public order, so I mean, it must have been a decent amount. I'm gonna stick you! Okay, next mine is done. Last big mining complex. Let's go. Re Get that going. Seven turns. Any movement on this front? No, we're still neutral. How many turns are we here? Six turns away. Okay. Um, can you just jump in there for now? Save some money. What are we? One turn away. So we're one turn away. Um, you go jump over there as well. So we'll leave him there just to um Yes, my king. Something to investigate. On my way. Ooh, is that gonna Honor make him go back far enough to get a draw out? No, nah, it's not. Well, sire, uh dang it, I was hoping to get a draw out there. Not sure if they get a garrison force here. Either way, we'll take out these lads. Glory, Went over to fight Runa's Erebor and kept getting wrecked by their pole arms. Never been a spy guy myself until now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to try and ignore Rune. I, I, I outlined at the start of the start of today's stream. My strat is ignore Rune as long as possible and as, as dangerous as that is. But I think we have to focus Gundabad. Get rid of this Gundabad and then I can turn around and go for Rune. Um, and Gundabad has the, the the wealthier settlements in the short term. Yes, obviously getting to the Sea of Rune is really good. Though not as good as it is for human factions because I don't have good sea trade. Um, but going up to the mountains where all the mines are um, is much more wealthier than me. So I think that's that's certainly uh, my, my strat for this campaign. Go for the mountains first and then turn around and go for Rune afterwards. You fought a Balrog in Moria the other day and you got stuck under the bridge. I felt it was fitting. The troll under the bridge, man. You got stuck. That's funny. I have no archers here, so we don't really need to position for archer fire. Um, so yeah, just, just stay here, honestly. 
I'm always, like, my first thought is where I'm going to position my archers, but then it's like, ah, uh, actually, there's no, no archers. Okay, chuck one of you over this side. Oh, they're all the way, all the way up here. They're not coming, I guess I don't have archers, so they're not coming to me. Up we go. Walk up the hill, you probably get tired, but it is the way it will be. I mean, if you're fighting the the uh, Kazadoom campaign and you gotta try and kill that that Balrog, man. It's um, you'll take anything, you know. You'll take anything to get that Balrog dead, you know. Because if he actually fights properly, fights, um, my goodness, it is it is a disaster. Kill so many, kill so many dwarves. so far behind. I'm trying to pick off the general here. I feel like they are coming to me now, sort of. I mean, pick off the captain. And they should rattle pretty easily. There we go, that's good. And we just need to get out. Out, 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 out. Okay. So now, we can engage on the front line and recharge and they should instantly route. All we just need to do is get them going for the infantry now. Yep, they're heading that way. Uh, you're not. Over here. Where are we going to there? Uh, can you fellas run, please? Um, it's not much, big melon slapper. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Um, terrain Malice's is very small. Only half the enemy force remains. Look how our cowardly foe runs. It is time to press the attack. All I all I know is uh, and I'll reference Kodiak and saying this as well. Uh, he's referencing Galu. Um, all I remember is Galu saying that. It's not much. It's it's kind of fairly insignificant, and um, it's like it's it's an element that's in the game, and so it's kind of there, but it's really not a big factor. Um, it's, it's quite a marginal thing. It's, it's not it's not the sort of thing that's going to swing a battle, you know. I mean, I guess they would. Uh, yeah, it, it would be less, Big Melon's Lover, but um, it's it's um, it's not it's not a lot. It's a marginal bonus. Dwarves have excellent stamina anyway, so their their stamina is quite decent. Any more mercenaries up here as well? I didn't check. Let's have a look-see. Oh, retinue expands. 
Dwarven Dagger, plus one to personal security. That actually should go on to the other guy. That should go on to him. Because that personal security, I don't think, will increase his numbers, but it will increase his numbers. Speaking of, what else we got here? Berserk. Plus two loyalty. I mean, better off being on this guy, isn't it? Two, three, four, five, six. Um. Okay. Dance on to it now. Um, I shall laying siege at once. Your like that. Yeah, they use terrain more for recruiting triggers, but you'll hardly notice it in a fight. Wait, personal security increases body bodyguard size? Yes. Um, something I did know, but something I've now learnt that if you have your spy in an army with the leading general, uh, that will actually increase their bodyguard size as well. As well as increasing culture. All these things I didn't know about spies. Um... Uh, no, I don't really want that with the board. Can I spend money anywhere? Can I spend money anywhere to get that down? Oh yeah, I could actually. I could spend it here. Um, just go... It's the most expensive thing. Like this one. Come back to here. Accept. And then go cancel. Oh! <gasps> Why is that Erebor? I mean, we don't lose any money, but we lose a turn a build of recruitment. Why was that on Erebor? I guess they're both going to get done at the same time now. <laughs> I, lost, I lost one turn. I lost one turn of, of building. Why was that? I selected with a board. Okay, game just, you do lose money, I think. Well, I lose a turn, I lose a turn of, of, turn earlier of money. Um, but no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It shouldn't have made any difference because the money, it would have cost the same last turn starting it would have this turn. I just lose a turn of mining income later on when it gets built, basically. Um, right. Okay, that was dumb of me. Right, so we should now be able to map information 600. You hold us at good day to you. Got a mission. Okay, this way, honestly. Book to the dinner dine. I think you lost like 400 gold. How would I have lost 400 gold? He, Gimli was the one here when we started building it. If anything, he would have got more traits, not less. Um, My king. I mean, if you got the numbers, I guess you got the numbers, but I don't see how we would have lost anything. Oh well, start is done now. It's misclick. It happens. Um, right. So, we could push up and defend Arab, uh, with a board, but I think just for now, we'll just let it fall. Let it be attacked. Um, I'm not super torn up about it. Um, it's making us a bit of money. If I don't actually defend a single battle at Erebor this campaign, that's gonna that's gonna feel feel bad. Duinian went the Avari. Okay. I'm still not convinced which way is better for the AI. I think depends on how they're going. I think if they're going well, Avari's good. But if they're not doing well, they're better off going Northman.
can kill. Ah, oh, they didn't attack us. That's good. So we get another 700 gold this turn. Dale and Rune. Okay. But neither of these settlements have been taken. They must just be fighting down here. And no one's taken these other two settlements. Slightly concerning. Change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Dale Cav, definitely. Are there any more mercenaries I, I can reach. recruit? Grab those two, and I'll send them to war. My lord, your will, my lord. I, I'm honor, my lord. I, no mercenaries reach. here. They're going to swing around the back. Hmm. At the end of the world, but you don't get a full amount back when you cancel a unit or building if the timer has gone past the first turn. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, dang it. Oh, well. Yeah, well, that's right. It's not the end of the world. It's done. But good. You know, I'll learn. I thought you did get the full amount back, but there you go. Another, another piece of learning. I'm always happy to learn more. Have a taste of my so, I mean, if they came and stood here, that'd be great if they came and attacked us. What I want to know is, is there a stack here? I know, if I can get it this turn, we'll take it. By your will, sire, is there a spawn engage. stack? No, it's just these two. Now, they still have the towers, which is going to eat up some troops, but... It is what it is. I think we go in. Think it's better off to fight it manually. Even though we got a full command general. I've had too I've been burnt too many times. And it is a cool settlement. Let's have a look at it. So this is up in the Withered Heath. Uh, you can see it is a pretty cool looking uh, settlement. It's got the dwarven lads here with the, the hammers. We go all the way up to the top of the... Hold up, swing around. All the way up to the top. Uh, there's like a wyvern or dragon skeleton down here. Um, sort of representing the whole dragons up in the north situation. So that's cool. Um... It is a cool looking map and very, very defensible as well. Although they are Dwarven Towers, which means they fire dodgy. They only fire forwards and maybe back, but not sideways. Yeah, so uh, they're, they're not great. There's only two units here. So we'll just have to get up there and get involved. Cav, you're hanging back. Open the towers. If you resolve, put your worst units in the army first in the army. Those units always take the most casualties. Ah. There you go. I mean, I've just been burnt on auto reserve. Auto resolve make me lose the battle. Just straight up lose the battle. Um, okay, so you lads are going to go up first. Have a secondary ram just in case. And then let's get around to the edges. Now let's go to here. I want to get them away from the um, towers as fast as possible. This side. Hold on over this side as well. There's ladders up. And then I'll keep the generals back because it's ballista towers. So we'll um, have them back here. I mean, they don't need to be close. The lads are ready to go through the front gate when needed. Okay. Dwarves. Get ready, dwarves. Dwarves. Push it up. What? I can go here. I can only go those two spots.
Can I not go up the back here anywhere? Oh, here? I mean, I know, knowing my luck, this thing's going to catch fire. Uh, where are they at? They're at the front gate. Though, that's a nice point. So, just in the future for defending, ladders can go here, here, and here. That's it. They can't go anywhere else. Literally nowhere else can they go. So, there's three spots towers or, or ladders can go up to. You just have to get inside and the towers won't fire at us. Because they're Gumby Dwarven Towers. I don't even know if this is going to work. Because they're going to get in each other's way here, aren't they? So the better plan is just probably don't even go for the gate and just take the... Just use the ladders. Because then you don't even get shot by the towers at all. You're sending two rams up like this also deflects the, the fire. And they don't focus one ram. Um, so that's always helpful as well. We're in position. Jump off the ramp. Under the side. Leave the one there. The battering ram is in place. It will not be long before our enemy's defenses fall. Yeah, get those ladders up as well. Good job, lads. Push them up. Push them up. Up we the go. Are now in place. Walls are no match for the valor and force of our arms. The valor and force of our arms. And with the dwarves, it is quite literally not just their arms as in their weapons, but their arms. These guys are buff. Go over that ladder. Over the wall, lads. Over the wall. They're just orcs with spears. Actually, just orcs with spears. What 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 are you what the heck is going on? Why are you What's going on? Why are you getting back down? Get, get up here. Get up here. What are you doing? What are they doing? Get up the damn ladder. What are they doing? I've never seen such... You sure will be executed. The wolves that go back down the ladder? Get up here. You guys are gonna come up on the wall? That's fine. You guys better not do the same thing. Get up there. Yo, is that something to do with like the pathing here because there were two ladders or something? I don't know. Our men are winning the battle. Never seen such cowardice in my life. Captured the enemy's walls. Oh, you're gonna don't go. Go up the ladder. Don't go. Oh, goodness. Get in here. Bottom. Actually, no, you guys, you're going to be useless. Get over here. Take this out. Okay, we're actually, we're up on the wall now. We're all going up on the wall. Oh, good. You guys decided to go back up. Should have a look at their stats. Snow Spears. Six, six and 15. Six and 15. This is their baseline spear unit. Six and 15. They're two better defense, two less attack than Arable Infantry. And I bet there's more of them as well. 6 and 15. Man. Get around here. I want you to get behind their back. Man. You know what this is making me want to do? Play a good to bad campaign. <laughs> oh, they're so good. Speed things up. Okay. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a stout fight for the dwarves, isn't it? I mean, this is just on the wall. We need to surround them. We need to get in that rear. Eleven minutes? Yeah, no, nah, not gonna fight it for eleven minutes. Go. Will we still be fighting it? Eleven minutes. We gotta kill them. Get up there. Let's go. Get in there. Press out. Get the Maddox. Oh my goodness! They just got melted. 
They just got melted. The battle is very much in our favor. They just got melted. True and steadfast, I didn't think they could kill my units that fast. Only half the there was a full unit of medics there. There was a full unit. There was. There was a full unit of Maddox. Maybe your resolve would have been better. Maybe, maybe actually we'll, 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 wait, we'll wait, that, wait down the timer. Um, because this is not going well at all. We just got, we just got carved. How did they all die so fast? They couldn't swing. The, I don't understand how they killed us that quickly. Like they wouldn't be able to swing their swords that quick. Hey, you know what we're going to do? Friggin' defending the, the, the square. We're capturing the square. You're not, you're not making it back. Defend the square. Much Hold area. lads for as long as you we can. Six minutes. Six the minutes. We're not killing ours. them. We're not killing them. Yeah, I'm sorry, lads, but you know that's just the way it is. Hey, where are they going? You gonna come down here? Okay. Hold them from the square. I mean, yeah, we're gonna have a better fight here than what we did. On the in on the tower, but in that, okay. Gee, we're still fighting these spears up on the wall. Twenty oh, twenty one of them still. I mean, yeah, we're not behind them, but I mean, we did kind of cut cut their unit in half. Goodness me! Well, we're gonna have money. Ha! <laughs> oh. With the Maddox. Okay, note to self. Mountain Guard are very, very strong. This is a duel going on here. Slow down. Let's watch this duel. Come on, you can do it. I believe. It's he's just an orc. Kill him. Swing. Swing. Oh no. Avenge! Avenge him! Uh, what? He's just running away! He's gonna stab him in the back! Quick! Why'd you turn your back on him? No! Quick! Avenge him! Take him down! Kill him! Hammer him! Yoink him! Give him a slap! Please! Oh, there goes another dwarf! Oh no! Am I the bad guys? What's going on here? We're not gonna kill him! Time's gonna run out! Thank goodness for that as well! Good. Yes. And and battle. Be in awe of the victory we have won here today. <laughs> and battle. End it. End it. Gee. Oh, we healed. We healed a lot. 26, 26, 29. That's good. That's that's good healing. Ah, uh, but still. Whoa. That was two units. Gee, I'm bloody glad there wasn't more than two units. Could have been very bad. Okay, next priority. Get money, get better units. Because <laughs> these guys aren't going to cut it. At least on the open field we have the cav. That's, that's the main advantage we have. It feels well done, odd saying that as a dwarf no player, but yeah. Yeah, get the spies in here. At your get in here. Now let's see. 21%. Let's see what we are next turn. Also. I am honor, my lord. I, my lady. In your name, sir. I swear. Marching now. Whack a tower down. Good. This is a little bit of vision that way. Jump back in. Now we are planning on holding this. So let's get the stone workers full. What did we say it was? 
Let's see how much those supplies do. 21% plus, plus a faction leader, which will dump a bit of culture in as well. Um, and let's not make the same mistake here again. Let's do that. Bill available, yes. Witherboard, cancel. Okay. Okay. We're good. Good. Well, we're making money next turn. That's, we lost, lost, lost so many troops. I guess, oh, and Azanar's 1,500 gold. What's here? We got mines here. Oh. Oh. Now, can we get... Maybe I make an Azanar my, um, my military center. I mean, I wouldn't normally say that, but this these spies are going to pump this culture real quick. Can we get Dragon Slayers from here? Rangers. Get anything special there? No. Right, Barracks. Why is twitching? Yes, we can get Dragon Slayers and Sons of Fallen. Oh yeah, so yeah, this is gonna be our this is gonna be our military center. So Anazana, as soon as we get builders halls up, we've already got tier one. We're gonna go straight to um, the what are we? Thousand. Does say that we've got it right. This is being constructed. So this is being constructed. Why is it saying we can upgrade at 4,000? I think it's already maxed here. Whereas this one, yeah, that, that one hasn't been. Yeah, okay. That's that's where we're going to be building military. Um, right. Well, they're going to not get picked off on the way. Awaiting your command. Okay, stand it. Oh my goodness. Oh no! Oh no! How is it they've got so many structures here already? Oh man, the AI cheats so much. <laughs> How is, they've got cardinal and set. Okay. Let me say it again. If I haven't proven it before, to those two guys in the YouTube comments who keep saying to me every campaign. Make sure you give this, the AI the settlements they need for their unique units. Or whatever. It does not matter. These guys have the Cardinal and Sentinels already. Which they should not be able to get until after this Angmar, after the Arnor or Reunited Kingdom script. Okay? The AI cheats. They can get unit recruitment that they should not be allowed to get. Okay? The elves do not need... Their, their settlement, uh, whatever it's called, Austin Othiel, they do not need that to get their Noldor, their Noldor units. They just get Noldor units. They can do it without it. Okay? They don't need the special settlements. They just have them. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's that rant done again. But, in other news, that's very bad that uh, the Dune Diner being stretched that fast that early and Azana, yes we definitely do want the Axmas guild here go for that this is gonna be our military center and they haven't attacked with a board yet I mean it's kind of just sitting there We've got a tower over here I mean we can we can go for I'm gonna stick this. You. Also, this guy's getting, uh, is it Auxiliary General? Is it? No, because he's not on the field at the moment. Yeah, let's give you some, let's give you some better equipment. And we're going to send out the army. Now, what's the culture at? 31% Kodiakans. <laughs> we've been, we've been wasting our time, Kodiakans. <laughs> that went from 21% to 31% with two spies. In one turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I get another spy. <laughs> this is this is how it's done. My king, Isile. Now this should be enough. An honor, my lord. Leading the men with honor, sire. Gee, this is 
I mean, if I didn't have the cab, I think we lose this because their units we've just discovered are straight up better. Um, Snow Spears. We do have a couple of archers. Attack. I know, it feels bad. Well, it feels good now, now that we've got, now that we know. Yay, okay, dad mode. EPM. Welcome in. New campaign today, dad mode. We are playing as the Dwarves of Erebor. And we are encountering staunch, staunch resistance from Gundabad. And when I say staunch resistance, I don't mean they've sent an army at me. I mean, they've sent a couple of units and they bloody slap. Okay, that's, 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 that's what we've discovered. Gundabad units slap really hard. I guess when I normally encounter Gundabad, I've already got better units, sort of like late game. Um, so... Um, okay, so let's kind of use this hill here a little bit. We'll have the Maddox on the flanks. Try and do some flanking. I mean, if, if the front line holds, that is. They might just be used to, to, to bolster the front line. Who knows? Sit you in there, nice and protected. My test was six spies with no buildings of generals and jumped 25% in one turn. Yeah, it's dim it, it's got diminishing returns. Um, the way I understand it. So, like, three spies will pretty much do what um, six spies does. Just slightly less. Where are they at? They're running away from us. Okay. So let's set up on this hill. Ah, oh, because there's unpathable terrain there. Thought Dolgador, dumb me. No, 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 no. Erebor, the Gundabad. Why, why are they? Why are they facing away from me? I mean. Are they tripped out here or something? What's going on? And can you two go? They've tripped out. They think they can't see us in the fog. That, that, that's what it is. They're facing the wrong way. Look, this is their general back here. That's okay. Let them let them trip out. Let them face the wrong way. That's okay. Um. Oh, they're, they're, they're switching it up now. They've, they've realized. They've seen us in the fog. We've got there they are. Couldn't see him before. Under position. Not graders. Spears. What we got here? Just, just, just stop, just stop. Scouts at the front. Where are they going? What is happening right now? I just need to charge them to, like, get them to stop being idiots. Hey, that should, that should sort them out a little bit. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast... Okay, Blarant, welcome in. We are already abusing spies, Blarant. It didn't take me long. I'm a fast learner. Why am I... Why is my... Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Can you guys like turn this way? Keep up now. The snow craters downhill. Spies are excellent. What is going on here? They are they're like confused or something. They are I've never seen the AI act this weirdly. I mean I, I see him act weirdly, but this is this is next level weird. Free charge on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they don't know where I am. It's really weird. If we remain true and steadfast, just, just go hit him. I mean, this is kind of like his raiders. There we go. Engage him on the front. That with them. Let's get over here. There we go. Enemy 
general oh, that's good. Only half the enemy force remains. That should pretty much seal the deal on them. Break them over this side. I didn't break them? Okay. What is this battle? It's like the like the terrain is is messing him up. Like it's not like what's passable and what isn't. Chase him, chase him, chase him. What are you guys getting minced from? Turn around, hit them. Fourteen spears. Surely that's not it. Surely that's not it. We catch them. Put them in the rear. Okay. We caught him. I think we've caught him. Okay. Go back around. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be they actually covered. turned there. Hold up, they turned. Why are they not breaking? Kind of caught them, but kind of didn't. Go down the hill. Why are they acting so weirdly? Okay, that's another good charge. Are they done yet? No, they're still fighting. It's like, they, it's like they've got a 10 star general on the field or something. What the frig is going on? Hit him again. Their captain is dead. Hit him. Kill him. Like, okay, they broke. I was going to say, if they don't break off a downhill charge, there we go. It is time to oh. Press Anyone to think I'm fighting elves or something? Snorks have good morale. You, you, you're telling me. You're telling me. Be in awe of the victory we have won How many we heal? 31%. Okay, it's not bad. <sighs> Gee, these lads. These lads fight good. They are tough. So much for that relaxing camp. Nah, it's still pretty relaxing. It's it's still pretty chill. I mean, compared to the Northern Dunai campaign, where even before the Reunited Kingdom, we were fighting, you know, Angmar, Dunland, Goblins. Um, at the moment, I have one enemy. This is this is this is chill as compared to that. Um, I mean, yeah, we're getting cut up a little bit, but. It happens. A proud victory. My king. Okay, I remember we're kind of just Armor. abandoning with the board. If they I attack with the board, they attack sir. with the board. It's not uh, we're not building anything there, we're not investing. We want to hold an Azana. We've marched our limit. Yeah, improve improve the, the stats. Dwarf campaigns are always super relaxing, low recruitment, lots of money, few enemies. I mean, we're gonna have enemies. We're gonna have enemies. Um, it's just, we're gonna manage it, which I think we should be able to. It's just still concerning me that, that Dale hasn't taken this. Makes me think that they're going not very well. I mean, the worst possible news would be to see Easterlings take this. This would be campaign is, is become hard immediately. That actually borders with that actually borders with Erebor, ironically enough. This settlement... Oh, no, it doesn't. No, it does. It does. It does border. Diagonals count. So, that actually borders. Huh. It's interesting. Dwarf vs. Goblins are chill, yeah. Hi. Right. Get any, any missions yet? We need we need better troops. This is the 
long and short of it. Right, now you see that early investment. We spent those first like 12 turns, first maybe, maybe more than that, like first 15 turns, getting our infrastructure set up, pretty much end turning, and now we're, we're away. That's what we needed. If we didn't do that, then we would have been in, in a lot of trouble financially. Just have to have a little bit of patience. Wolf and Elf campaigns aren't your favorite either. Just to be fun OP sometimes, but I just prefer to have spammable units. I like the feeling of being the underdog, beating something far stronger with weak troops and good micro. See, I like having fewer troops of higher quality and being surrounded, you know? That's that's the feeling I like. I guess it's kind of the same, the same thing, but from a different perspective. You like being the underdog, it's just what you're viewing as the underdog. I view the underdog as being outnumbered on the field, whereas you view being the underdogs being out, having out Aye, quality. Um, Aye. Forward. So, it, it's, I guess it's just your, your, your opinion on it, how you, how you feel about it. Right, no units yet. What are we, four and four? Three, three, three turns away. Booked on the non dine perfect. Karandros has fallen at turn 23. Oh, Gondor's gonna get cooked. Gondor's gonna get cooked. Ah, uh, that's not good. Okay, Mordor is going to rule the south. That's... It's gonna be sad. Any mercenaries? Oh. I mean, I've got the money. Do... Will they destroy it? Let's just put it in. Let's test it. 1700 gold. It's a test. So I'm just thinking, if they take this, will this get destroyed? I don't think so. Maybe it will. I don't know. We'll see. We're not defending it right now. Actually, pretty close to being able to train units. Huh? Oh, actually, we probably are. Probably can. Twenty-five percent. Yeah, we're well over that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is going to be our military center. We just got to get get it up and running. Okay, yeah, let's talk to the Dunedain. What is it you wish to discuss? You hold us at ransom, and you know this. Where's Karandros? Uh, that's on the river between Mordor and and Gondor. Another proposition for us then. It's just north of Osgiliath. After some consideration, until we meet again. Hey, keep yes, coming. Sir. Please been reached. Of course, sir. Go visit some hobbits. Yeah, we'll just keep getting free upkeep for now, and then we'll. Probably with the next round of units. Actually, when the general's available. Because I want to send Gimli. I'll send Gimli with the next army. And we'll leave this general here to govern. So when he's available, that's when we'll go. And we'll send everything we have. But that will be... And there'll be another... Yeah, there'll be another two coming over from there by then as well. So that'll be good. That'll work out. I'm ha pretty happy with that. You know... There's nothing attacking it. Just... Just start building a little bit, you know. Start building a little bit. Yeah, they get a, they get insane garrison scripts um, for Osgiliath and for Karandros, and they still manage to lose it. I mean, if a, if a human player ever got the garrison scripts that that the AI gets, you would just never lose it. I mean, sure, let's just keep, just keep 
training everyone. Give them some better weapons. We need better weapons, that's for sure. Hey, Blaren, another thing as well, since you're here, resident ex, ex modder, uh, ex developer for, for, um, DAC. They added this in version 5 melee bonus for range troops from the from the guilds. It always used to be just be for melee units, and now it's for range troops as well. I was always on, like, I knew that the functionality was there because you could do it in, like, custom battle. And some units would sometimes start, like, ranged units would start. No, it wasn't there. You couldn't you couldn't retrain ranged units, get the melee weapon upgrade. It was never there. It's in version 5, unless they got rid of it and they brought it back. But previous version, it wasn't in the game. Um, but now you can retrain ranged units um, and javelin slash axe throwing units that you could never do before. Cav archers you can retrain with melee weapon upgrades now. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I was just I was just wondering what the thinking behind that why it wasn't always there or was it just viewed as like I don't know. Oh, Dale have taken this. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, that's what we want to see. Your honor. Yes, sire. Aye, sire. Just keep heading over, Mr. Delving. Is over, sire. I must stop here, sire. Range damage upgrades weren't possible, so it was ignored. I think that's the extent of the thought. But, I mean, they're doing it now, right? No, it's it's melee. It's it's ranged. It's it's ranged units melee damage. That's that's the change. So I could I could upgrade these Northman archers over here now. If I moved them over to Anazanar, I could give them an additional attack on their melee weapon, which I couldn't do before. Yeah, no, I think it was just overlooked because range missile attack couldn't be buffed. Okay, so they just thought about that and not thought about the the melee side of it. Yeah, fair enough. They're like these these ones here now. These lads, who are javelins, which you could never upgrade with a melee weapon upgrade, have got the melee weapon upgrade, which is, I think, great. I, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, I think, you should, of course, you should be able to upgrade the, the ranged unit's melee weapons. Why wouldn't you be able to? That, that's ridiculous if you think about it. Of course you should be able to. But it's not impossible to get guilds in your starting two provinces now. <laughs> There's no guild offerings for Erebor, Erebor or uh, Kirkathol. Only, I've got them in both of these. Ironically enough, newly captured settlements. I've got the guild offering, but for these two, no. I won't get offered the guild for them, probably in the whole campaign. It may happen, very, very late. But, you know, I'll, they just won't be offered guilds anymore. Right, um, yeah, we just, is it this turn we can guild, build them? Right, next turn. Right, we're just going to build up that next force. Probably use our spies as well to... How are we going on culture? It's so good. It's without even a culture building. Oh, it's so good. Do you hear about what the engine overhaul project can do now? Garrison scripts and spawn generals won't have to have their units in the EDU. We can get custom units for everything. So guilds are assigned on a point system and the AI gets massive cheats for them. So the settlements you capture from enemies tend to be further along. Yeah, um, that's the explanation that was given on Discord when I saw someone put it in the bug report. But these, these, these settlements have had like what? Like one, there was one structure here. Mining network was built because I built this and I got this. This was offered to me. So when I got this, the mining network was the only structure the AI had built. And I got offered a guild. Whereas I've been sitting here, I built this all the way up. I'm almost on the tier 3 um, mine. Like, uh, in terms of if there's a point system, I don't understand how that point system works. Because they would get... Like this, right? One structure as opposed to six structures. When I say massive cheats, I mean the AI can get 100 points in 2-3 turns without building anything. Oh, right. But, okay, on that point system, how long does it take to get the points required for a guild offer then? Because I know 
in my Northern Dunedain campaign, I don't think I ever got offered... I don't think I ever got offered a guild in Fenestrunen. Like in the whole campaign. And I was building structures there the entire time. Just never got offered there. It's not... It's like since version 5, it's it's been very obvious. Um, that, that you can't get the the guild points or whatever is required to get the structures. It's just almost impossible to get guilds anywhere now. Um, and I want to come back to what you said about the engine overall project as well. I haven't, I haven't forgotten about that. Um, I'm still, I'm just processing that at the moment. Ah, uh, yeah, we're still waiting for these troops to come across. If they take witherboard, they take witherboard. I don't really care in that time. I gotta talk to Bree. Forgot. Used to have a guild that was intended to increase range damage, but it was discovered that range damage is not upgradable. Then they wanted to give melee upgrades to range units, but they didn't write the code correctly. Then they finally caught it and added it to the description in order for it to make it clear. After turn 40, points decay by one turn, by, by one a turn. And most things you do to get guilds only gives you one to two points. Certain things like signaling, signing trade routes can get you 10 points towards a merchant guild faction wide. So you're just saying it's like impossible pretty much to get the guilds now in your starting provinces. Um, I have to have a look at that, that picture, Tetra, um, of the tat. Near impossible. Well, why do that then? Why? Because previously I, you could get them in 4.6, in 4.6, you could get guilds in your starting provinces all the time. Like I remember playing as Gondor and you'd have like merchant guilds all through your regions and now if you play as gondor you just don't get them you just do not get merchants guilds in your in any of your starting provinces it's just impossible um so i i, I don't understand the change it's not so bad for erebor because you only start with two two territories right so it only affects those two um and everything else will be will have it but i mean Erebor is one of my main, gonna be one of my main recruitment centers, same as Kirikathol. Um, so I'm not gonna get the axe upgrade, it's gonna be annoying. Get the melee weapon upgrade. My lord, you have a proposition for You hold us at ransom. There is something else you wish to propose then. This seems quite reasonable. This meeting was disappointing. Aye, sir. Go talk to Ered Lewin, get some money from them. Uh, I need to check. Okay, we're still good. No threat here, so we'll move these across. Aye, sire. Move out. That'll do them today, sire. Because you end up getting them in other regions, you can only get one guild offering a term and it will always be the highest point option. Since the AO will have thousands of points in the towns by the time you get them, they're always the ones offered when a guild offer comes up. If you play really slow, you can get them in your starting settlements. I mean, I played this starting pretty slow. We, we, we end turned for 15 turns. Um, I don't know. It seems like... You could get them before and now you can't and I don't understand why they didn't just do that the first time. Do it the way it was meant to be. Like, wh why why they changed it? Because there was no issue before. Guilds were working as intended before. AI had guilds, human players had guilds. Like, everyone had guilds. So I don't, I don't get the... I don't see why they had to change it. Uh, I think we do want to build this in the military a little bit as well. Uh, feast all is tempted because it's another ten percent. I mean, we've got so much money. We don't need the feast all. That's a that's a bait. Let's just go for. Ooh, that's nice. Let's start building in the military this side as well. Uh, 
how many turns on that general? Two turns plus three turns to build. Yeah, so five turns. Five turns and we send the next army. Been any mercenaries still? I'm surprised there hasn't been any mercenaries up here. No, nothing. Nothing was changed? I'll ask about it. Oh, something was certainly changed. Because you can definitely... You, you just got guilds across everywhere. Um, previously. Like, you'd be offered a guild pretty much on turn one. Like, turn turn two, three, four, you, you get offered guilds. Like, you're playing as Kazadoom, you would get offered a guild in Kazadoom on turn three. Like, it would, it would happen all the time. You would get your starting guilds in your starting provinces. Like in Erebor, you would you would get a guild in Erebor straight away. Um, oh, gee, Minister is under attack. They're they're cooked. Where is it? Goblin Town? Yeah, that's too far away. Aye, Lord. Aye, forward. We've marched our limit. So we're not gonna have anything else here. We're just gonna have to run mercenaries in the next army. Not gonna be as strong, but. Yeah, we got we got four units here. It's not too bad. They're still not attacking us here. I'm kind of just surprised that they haven't haven't done anything. I mean, they must be fighting Woodland Realm. Have they lost? Oh, Woodland Realm still hold this. Okay, that's good. Hmm. I mean, the spies are just giving me culture at the moment. I'm happy to leave them there. Uh, but we'll scout with them soon. You know what I do want here? Let's just queue it up before I forget. Is the smoking house on another spy? Let's do that. Forgot about okay. the spy. In fact, if I started. Yeah, I have started building. I won't make that mistake again. You're on. Of course, sir. Is there an advantage for keeping the ring besides more hit points? Um, not really. It's got some stats. For Saruman, yes. For Sauron, yes. For everyone else, no. Yeah, it's a downside. Um, yeah, so obviously as a good faction, you can drop it in the fire. As an evil faction, you can drop it off to Mordor. If you don't drop it off to Mordor as an evil faction, then Mordor gets very toey with you and I think declares war. Um... Aye, McKay. Aye, sire. I'll continue tomorrow, sire. I will stop here, sire. Yeah, you will eventually lose it. Unless you have... Unless the ring is your eighth... If the ring is your eighth retinue, then you won't get the golem retinue. Because golem will steal it. As, and But if you have... If you have... Uh, sorry, ancillary. Um, if you have... Uh, if you're full on ancillaries when you get the ring, so you have seven ancillaries, get the ring, that'll be your eighth ancillary. You won't get the golem ancillary, which means you won't ever lose it unless you want to get rid of it. Um, but if you only have six, I think you get the ring and then the following turn, I'm pretty sure the golem ancillary turns up. It's very soon after, uh, if you haven't got those slots filled. Two to three turns, yeah. yeah it's very, very close after. But otherwise it's not helpful to really keep it does slow you down it's not great um well you know they haven't attacked you yet um garrison okay so this is our military center not gonna make money here we're making mm, troops so barracks so barracks number one Retrain some of our units. I sign. Onward. We've marched our okay, limit. That general. We can I be of service? Yeah, custom, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Blarant, sorry, yeah, before you go. Um, so you said that they've overhauled the system so that you can basically have, so I, my understanding is 
that you only have um, a certain amount of units makeable in the game based on just the hard, like the hard coded nation nature of Medieval Two. So I know it was like if you wanted to make a certain custom unit, it was like, or oh, or make a certain unit. It was like, okay, we want to remove that unit to make this unit. You know, like we can't because there was just a hard limit on what was um, available. So what you're saying is that 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 is just not not a thing anymore. Engine overall project does a lot. Limit is 500. We're at 499. So what? So what does that do now? Are we are we at higher than we are higher than that now, or or what are you saying? Um, where's the structure? Am I blind? Do I just need the next tier, maybe? Miner's Union. I just need the next tier. Right, let's go. Miner's Union. Hi, Lord. Hi. Forward! We march no further today. Aye, sire. They are sending some units here now. Uh, it's not going to get built in time. My king. And mercenaries. Can't make it there fast enough. I said I was fine with losing it. Uh, I got plenty of money. If they don't siege, they don't siege. We'll, we'll just see what happens. My lord. Yes. It's good to see you. This seems quite well. That was on. Of course, sir. Okay. Not quite. Units that don't need to be recruited can be removed from the EDU. So spawned only units like script spawn generals and garrison units can be unique settlement to settlement. Ah, or general to general without any space being taken up. So garrison units like Grey Comp Garrison units and units like Grey Company don't take up a slot anymore. Yeah. That should be open up like 20-ish slots. So that's seven Sorry. different garrison units and five or so unique generals, which opens up some room. But the big thing is every starting general could potentially have a unique bodyguard. Yeah, which would then, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, even even just by itself, that's that's what twelve slots. Um, so that's twelve additional units we could have in the mod, um, which is huge. Absolutely huge. Every star in general could have a unique bodyguard. Blarant, that's insane. Rumors from Ered Lewin. This is going to be probably fairly big because Ered Lewin will uh, probably... If they go evil, that will be not good for us. Anazana. Yeah, sure. Sure. Upgraded one. That's going to be our recruitment place anyway. Scripts could spawn unique units to aid in certain fights. There's a lot of possibilities. Oh, that sounds cool. Sprips could spawn unique units and they wouldn't contribute to the unit count. So you could have just a specific unit that spawns because of a script. What about like Army of the Dead? That wouldn't count then, would it? That wouldn't count in the in the unit count. Okay, we can retrain. Him, him, and him as well. Experience miner, it's nice. King Dane construction costs. All well, the 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 dwarf um, traits are really good. I do love them all. Okay, we want to go to then get practice range. That here. So, um, my king. What are we here? Aye, move out. 
They need to Aye, move sir. this turn or next turn? This turn, they need to move. Aye. On mark. So, Blaren, I don't know if I've asked you this before, but I feel like we've talked about it. This morale bonus to troops trained here, plus three global effect. Like... So it says global effect, but... So does this mean just units that are trained here globally get plus three, or globally all units get plus three morale? I, I just, I've never quite understood. It kind of like feels counterintuitive what it's saying. Because if, if it was morale bonus to troops trained here plus three, you wouldn't have to have in brackets global effect. A lot of the global effects are broken at the moment. Okay. But what 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 is this even meant to mean? Like I don't know what the intention of this even is. Um, welcome in XGCX. Welcome in yo. What's up? I'm playing some dwarves. Some dwarves having some fun with it. We're gonna lose a settlement here, but that's okay. We're gonna take it back again soon. Uh, let's cancel that. Back a little bit of money. And how are you today, Juicy? Send you south to go talk to Enith Wraith. His journey is over, sire. Yeah, yeah. Culture bonus that says global effect would boost culture wide and every settlement you own. Yeah, yeah, I know that. For that one, if it worked, it would make it so that every troop trained anywhere would get plus three morale bonus. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of what it implies, but it says troops trained here get plus three. Why wouldn't it just say troops trained get plus three brackets global effect? The the word the word here is what's confusing me. They just said morale bonus to troops trained plus three global effect. That would make sense to me. But the here is, is what's throwing me off because this and this don't make sense together. That doesn't seem to to equate. Yeah, we've got our army. Let's go. Merc oh my goodness! Look at them. Oh, the mercenaries! Let's go. I'm feeling confident with this army all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> got nothing else left to defend here. We probably should be a little bit careful about that, but um, if we lose Erebor. I don't know how much of a fan you are of Hearts of Iron, but there's pretty cool Lord of the Rings one. I've never really got into Hearts of Iron, like, or Paradox games. It's a time issue. I'm not saying Paradox games are bad. I'm literally saying I've never had the time to play them. Um, and I think that most of them are quite excellent. Um, that's, that's basically the long and the short of it. Okay, Smoking House. So we're using another Spy. Over here, grab Spy. And then that my union yet. Let's just keep working them towards more more military. That's everyone. We'll try and save up for him. Save the troop numbers for that one. Okay. You're gonna get there turn too late, but alas, that's fine. I'm a king. I sorry. I'm a stop here, sir. <laughs> you know it doesn't make sense the, resur the resurgence of mullets this is true i can i can get behind that one i'll second i'll second that tetra can i edit the words used to explain effects oh okay sadly what is happening there is we are giving a building a morale bonus and then giving that bonus a global modifier the game shows this by adding a morale effect and then adding brackets okay got it got it got it got it but are you saying currently that that's not working that one is that one not currently working like at all that functional element of the morale side yeah you are yeah i don't think there's any point in fighting this manually that's that's a loss in fact we might even have killed more might have even killed more in order as a whole than than fighting that manually honestly now what i want to know is does our guild get destroyed that's the it's not going to hurt us too much if it does but that's the experiment there 
Global effects aren't working at all. I think they are, some are. Because the global the global upkeep effects are definitely working. Um for the the ones that give you global upkeep for units. Because I know that worked in my take with the board, nice. I know that worked in my uh, Woodland Realm campaign when you got the new special building. Because um, I had like settlements that had insane amounts of upkeep globally. Uh, perhaps some are. I know this one and, and the culture one aren't. Oh, the culture one aren't? I kind of thought that one was working as well. Maybe, I mean, that one's hard to test. It's, I mean, you actually have to look at the numbers, but... Um, Your will, my lord. Orders. Move out! Get rid of there. Siege. Okay. Take that one back and get 2,000 gold. That works. And then Erebor is made safe again once we have these two. The elves still have... Yes, they do still have it. Good, good, good. Okay. This is all working out well. Get that spy forward. Or you move the spy forward. You're going to come and switch the culture on with the board. Uh, and Azana is great, 85%. I'm not even sure there's a unit that needs 85% culture, if I'm being honest. Yeah, they don't need 75. Okay, so that's fine. That's all good. So now, what I want is one of you Something will uh, come over here and help with the board. The other one is I going to go so. scout this way and see what's going on. Sire, no further this day. Is not tested for a personal mod. Okay. Okay, Shushu. Let's go, dwarves. Welcome here, Shushu. Glad to see you. Nothing is more than 75 yet. So that's that's just public order and anything additional. Right, we'll definitely grab those axe throwers. Okay. And as an, uh, you are my personal troop recruitment center. We grab the Orakani clan hall right now. That'll give me immediately access to some more units. Let's grab that. I mean, they're not great, but it's two more units. Go for that one. And Blaren, I can't thank you enough again for the um, the spy knowledge on spies. The fact that Anazanar is now at eighty-five percent culture after like a few turns, like what, like seven turns or something, eight turns. I mean, it's been there a bit longer, but it was it was at like fifty percent pretty quick, and that dropped off. Plus a free upkeep. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. The Orakani Clan Hall. I'll grab it. This guy is making making his rounds. He's doing the work. Family member. Mountain Guard. Mountain Guard are very strong. They must be fighting against the Anduin Vale pretty hard here. And the, and the Woodland Realm. Because we haven't really seen any big armies. We've kind of just seen sort of remnants of forces. Nothing, nothing too substantial. This is, this is looking nice. Oh, more mercenaries? Yeah, grab them. Yeah, absolutely. Join, join the fray. Now, on the personal security, Blaren, and I, I think I figured this out myself. <laughs> um, custom generals, the spies, spies in an army with custom generals won't increase their bodyguard size. Because that's hard locked to the size of the unit. Is that the case? Like, for instance, um, like Gimli's Axe Guard of Erebor. They will as long as it doesn't exceed 77. Okay. But most of them would exceed 77. I guess it was like, if it was... um. I guess the Elven, no, because they're more than that as well. I guess Gilglad's company, Grey Company. There's a few that would be under 77, but not many. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Cav Generals, yeah, Cav Generals. Yep, that would work on those as well. Two fifty-five. My goodness. And generals were replenished to max. Yeah, you could do it to 
to um, Dol Emroth generals, definitely. Dol Emroth, uh, Rohan generals. EOP, is that the engine overhaul? So is that something that's coming to to DAC, like currently? Is that something that they they are going to be implementing? Or is that just like other sub mods? Guard barracks, let's get that up. Get some more units here. Have we retrain that 73 yet? No, not yet. A little bit more. Got the axe thrower up. Okay, what's going on Some over here? Well, that is very much undefended. I think they do get uh, four or five units here, maybe even six. Depends if they've got their own garrison. But I think they get four four spawned in. That's not as lowly defended as it looks, but still, I'm looking at it with with greedy eyes. We're gonna get these Orakani clan. We're gonna get some more units in here. Um, we might we might be able to push out there. Definitely going here. We march to battle. Is this another general we're killing? They've been pretty hard to kill. Nah, just some just some other lads. One eighty. I don't think they have longer range, but we might be able to pick off a few. Yes, next version will have EOP. Oh, 255. I mean, that's just broken. He had like Gilgalad's company with 255 units. Like that's an army all by itself. That's a one man army. Now imagine custom mountain guard and trolls getting spawned to defend certain settlements, adding extra challenge. <gasps> Oh my goodness. <sighs> yeah, because you don't have the limit on the scripting. So you don't just have to have the scripted gar garrisons. You can have scripted... scripted trolls. For garrison defense. You have scripted mountain guard. You have scripted anything. Oh man, I'm all of a sudden very excited for the next for the next uh installment. I mean I know it's gonna be a long way away, but man, that is that is something else. Uh, what's your range? 160? Uh 150? Yeah, so you're not gonna be in range. They're gonna outrange you. So it's probably no use. Unless we um pin them on one side and fire from the other. Let's try that. If we shoot from from this side, shoot from this side, and we'll pin them on the other side and shoot into their backs. Let's do that. Um, and then yeah, let's just put in. Who's got the highest armor? Cell swords. Yep. So we'll put in cell swords and eleven. 10, pretty similar, straight on. I'd try and keep the privateer axe if possible. Send in lads with good with good armor. Good shields. Just to take the shots. In fact, send Gimli forward just to try and take some um take some hits first. And get some axe throws off as well. And then yeah. A couple of you can come around this side if we want to charge in later on. I want to make this as efficient as possible. And then the rest of you, I don't know, just go stand here. Okay, lads, let's go get in here. On the spears. Let's go, let's go. Probably don't run in over the top of each other. I mean, that's whatever. One unit. You run to there and try and get some axes. Right. And we'll start moving over the archers. I think the easiest way to kill these lads is by shooting them in the back. I think that's going to be the reality. You're very excited. 
script and script. Oh, you can have scripted battles. Oh. Without the janky have to move here that the KD script needs. I'm very excited to be modding. Oh, considering the garrison scripts alone take up one third of the campaign script, it will massively speed up end turn times too. Because we make a dynamic script that works on every settlement instead of checking each one individually. Oh my goodness. That's actually insane. I'm I'm excited for you, and I'm not even I'm not even modding it then. I'm excited. Get onto him. Let's go, go, go. Stop him from firing. Okay, archers, get over to here. Great, to shoot him in the back. Okay, can you move up? As long as they're not firing their bows, yeah, we've got the bows engaged. Okay. Can you just stop here? Because I don't want you to get tired. Once you get there, just stop. Okay. Archers, you can let loose. Okay, can you throw into the raiders over here? Okay, throw into the spears. They're the ones probably going to hold longer. Okay, put the spears. Raiders, okay. Whoa, no, no, I don't want sticky keys. <laughs> Whoops. Get those axes in there. This is uh, this is Gimli's bodyguard unit, by the way, and there's, there's a custom model for Gimli. You can see him here. So he's pretty special because even the even the um, even the faction leader doesn't have a custom model, but uh, Gimli does. So there he is with his axe. I mean, this unit is is cooked. Look at these guys. I mean, look how good they look from from head to toe, from head to toe covered with their big old axes. Once they've thrown, get the two-handed out. Can you just pull Only out, actually? Half the enemy force remains. Pull back. So you get stray shots. Yeah, I mean it's it's possible now, Cody Atkins. You can have every every general can have a custom can have a custom bodyguard. I mean, that could just be That's gonna be it's gonna be incredible. Alright the Raiders. Okay. Get in. Stop. The sky's the limit, man. It's possible. Rohan will likely not be getting love immediately. That that will be Moria, Gobos, and Dale. Uh, Moria, Gobos. No one cares about Moria. <laughs> I don't care about Moria. <laughs> maybe, maybe I will care about Moria if if they're if they're made more fun to play. I don't know. I'm just not a, I'm not a Moria enjoyer. I know they're out there. There are Moria enjoyers out there. One volley and then we'll stop. One volley. Don't to kill too many of our own troops. That wasn't a very consistent volley. They haven't had love in a long time. Yeah, I know. There's a reason for that. There's a reason Moria hasn't had love in a long time. Look how good these guys look in, in battle. Let's just slow down and watch their combat. Oh, yeah. The two-handed axes. Give it to them. Give it to them. Oh, so good. I love this unit. The, the whole aesthetic of them. Like, do, do they get taller when they swing? Just standing up on tippy toes? That was just a bug then, visual bug. This guy, look at this guy. He's, he's got stilts. 
Look at him go! I'm sure they're not all like that. It's just this one model is doing it. Yeah, the, the others aren't doing it. It's just when this guy swings, he's, he gets tall. Hey. This guy. The enemy oh, yeah. general lies dead. Let the crows out. This is a Dale overhaul is on the way, though. Not sure what's in the pipeline exactly and the things I do. No, I'm not supposed to share. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Sure, sure. So it'll have to be a surprise. Yeah, yeah, I understand that 100%, 100%. Um, but, I mean, just saying that you've cracked the... Just just sharing that, that there's... That that has been done and sort of explaining that. I mean, there's just a... There's so much you could do now. I was kind of at the point where thinking that Divide and Conquer was kind of at... Kind, it kind of peaked. Like, I kind of thought, you know, whatever could be done would have been done with medieval 2 by this point um and that it kind of had had reached a, a precipice and yeah there might have been some some fine tuning and some other things done but yeah, at, at a at a maximal point this was about as good as it was going to get um but just to hear that it's kind of like well it's it, where it, there's actually a lot more that can be done there's a lot do i have a tower out here somewhere it's just a spy uh, there is a, I think that's my tower there. He's standing on it though, we'll probably lose vision. Yeah, I kept the Axmith skill, nice. Okay. Um, you know, I can get good units here as well. Yes, my king. Something to investigate. Honor, my lord. Where do I want to push? This is the question, because this now opens up... This opens up to two different regions. See, if I was to take the Inazanar army and take Dane's Halls, that would then mean that this opens up to one region and we could push. So what we want to do is take the Inazanar army and push to Dane's Halls. Um, which means that we need to pump it up a little bit. We are no, we are going to get the Orokani. Um, but we need to send a few other units that way. Just thinking about taking Dane's Halls and more defending Dane's Halls. Are archers okay? They're okay, not great. Um, is there enough cav in this army? Probably send the Dale cav. One of those to here. Forward. Retrain them. And also send... Maybe... Uh, maybe we send... Your will, my lord. These two. My lord. And leave the Dwarven Travellers down here. Because they can replenish in this region. Let's send those two. One, two, one, two. Need a bit more. Because we need to probably be the bigger army if we're attacking with it. Um, you could get I replenished. Saw. Maybe take the cell swords will, and a matic unit. I, Lord. I, I okay, saw. so that should be enough to pretty much make a full stack. My king. We head forward with that. Go to Dane's Halls. Because we should be getting some reinforcements. In four turns we can recruit some more. To back that up. Five turns. Oh. Sh shoot. Right. Um, no mercenaries. Um, we're midway through that. Uh, can you leave here? Aye, my liege. Yeah, come down here. See if there's any mercenaries. We, march to glory. we need to find something. Night, um, and we've got nothing. We've moved everything over. <sighs> Dale are moving an army this way. I mean, this is a good general. He's got 65. 65 lads. They can actually do a lot of work. Uh, as long as it's not too much like armor piercing. Five turns, it's not going to be enough. Three turns on a garrison. 
But I just need to cancel this right now. I really don't want to. Don't think there's any more like mercenaries in this region. That's no, the same mercenary pool. Okay. My king. Um, we still want to keep pushing Gundabad. We need to get some troops over there. Just don't think reinforcements are going to get there fast enough from here. What do we got? Next turn. After a line, mercenaries and maybe a garrison. I mean, we may just have to abandon it. We can't get troops there. This has a bunch of older modders coming back. We have a larger team actively modding than we've ever had. Because my understanding was that you weren't actively modding on Divide and Conquer. But now I get the feeling that you are. <laughs> I thought you you were modding back in like version three, uh, and now you <laughs> I might be coming back XD. <laughs> uh, I know you'd said in the past that you modded on older versions, but you hadn't modded on this on you weren't currently modding, and now it's like, uh, yeah, a bunch of older modders, a bunch of older modders are coming back. I mean, I don't know who. Uh, people who once did it before and now are coming back. Um, I don't know, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at using EAP to get functioning C battles working. The models and everything for ships are in the files, but they never finished it. You mean like manually for sea battles? I hope you're not sharing things you shouldn't be sharing. I hope you don't get kicked off the modding team. <laughs> um, that sounds like something you should be keeping to yourself. I mean manually fought sea battles. Like with boats, like as in like a la Rome 2, like you'd board, you board other boats. Um, or like... Does that mean you can have different variety of boats as well? It's a personal project. My Lord. Get him. You can have like... Ooh, Honor, grab you. Go back. Move out! You have like a whole different variety of boats. Oh, yes, please. Oh, it's all cab, but I mean, I'll take anything at the moment. You go back to there. Uh, I wonder if this is a different mercenary pool. I'm just looking at my distance to... I don't want to go... Just come back this way and I'll go down to there. I just want to keep a close eye. On these boards. Oh, there is a slight... Fog of War area there. I'm just mindful of that. My king. They just don't work properly. They already exist in the game. The moles and everything are already a thing. My goodness. My king. I. Okay, retrain you. Actually, no. Let's get the Orokani. Um, you merge into that. And then we need to retrain some lads. Um, you know what? 64 and 73 merge you two. And we need better pipe ball. Oh, I can retrain units here as well, get the melee weapon upgrade. Forgot about that. Oh, I don't have a pipe hole. Um, I wasn't building anything. I didn't build anything. That was dumb. Um, get a pipe hole.
It's theoretically possible with EOP, gonna try and make it work, no promises. If it ends up being easy, I'll do Rome 2 style naval landings. XD? <laughs> what? In Medieval 2? Yes, my king. Dude. You're... <laughs> you're... You're making an offer I can't refuse, you know, like... <laughs> This is, this is insane. 35% already, nice. Okay, we got a mission to talk to... Aye, my lord. Oh, course. that's not Inthwaite, that's just a bunch of rebels. Okay, let's keep Aye, going. Sire. Today's journey is over, sire. I'll continue tomorrow, sire. Okay, so we will press once we've retrained our units and got the stiff beards up. No, stone foots, stone foots and stiff beards. I can join the party. Close. Close to... Just... learn about this over here. Hi, my liege. If the Easterlings come, I've got, what, three... Rovanian Cav and a General, currently. I can send the, the Archer over. This is going to be the most... most scuffed defense in history. Anyway, I'm off to bed. Have a good night. Blaren, so much. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise, your knowledge once again. And uh, and sharing hopes for the future, I want to say. And explaining everything that's going on uh, as much as you can, obviously, inside with what's going inside uh, the, the DAC team at the moment. So uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, I uh, I look forward to to learning more. And have a wonderful sleep, mate. Potential at the very least. Possibilities. Yeah, yeah well, that's great. I, I didn't think there were any potentials or possibilities. So that's that's a positive already. My king. Marching now. Come to here, build the tower. I, noble sire, setting a vigilant uh, I think it's the same mercenary pool. Right, okay. March to glory. So this is a different this is a different mercenary pool. So really what I should do is sit on this border and just check both of these. Until we um until we are sure. My king, march. Okay, three Ravenian Cav. Doing things. You get over here. You can make it, I believe. Yeah, that's those two. So these are our stiff beard archers. A decent archer unit. Um, pretty good defense. Eleven defense. Um. Not great, but they're okay. And the Stonefoot Spearmen. 16 defense is... I mean, this is effectively a... Their standard spear unit. 6, 4, 16. I think that's the same as their... Their baseline spear for Gundabad. So... Yeah. It's, it's something. Awaiting your command. Of course, sir. I'll continue to mourn, sir. Okay, Miners Union. I don't see any troops yet. So this makes me tempted just to get Guard Barracks. Because we do have a lot of free upkeep here. Between these two, we'd have... 5 free upkeep. I think we go Guard Barracks. And we get a decent lot of free upkeep there. And Azanar got... Yep, that's 3 at a time. And you go Minus Quarters as well. Okay, so they are starting to muster some forces here. Quite a few generals. Three generals, actually. Generals blade. themselves are I'm quite strong. You. you can get an Orokani clan hall up and units recruited in three turns also. I think they'd be better than the T1 garrison. Yeah, um, I think... I think that because there's nothing showing yet, I think i just go for the guard barracks. I mean, realistically, I've got, like, what? I Three turns. Three turns once they show. I mean, that means I'm cooked either way at the moment. I guess I'd get the I get the militia up. I get the garrison up, but kind of want to try and look forward and just get the guard barracks. Are we losing money right now? Yeah, we are. Yeah, so we need to push because we got these armies sitting and not doing anything. We're just retraining and then we're gonna go. Um.
In fact, why why am I bother retraining? We just need to go right now. An honor, my lord. I sire. Don't be greedy. Don't be like the dwarf and be greedy. Now the issue with this oh hang on. The issue with this is how long till any units? Is these these forces here could kind of go around with a board and siege an Azanar. But not if we get Dane's Halls first. The only board is Dane's Halls, right? I know sire. In your name, sire. I, noble sire, setting a vigilant watch here. Set a watch. We come here. If we can get in, get this done fast. Not everyone got retrained, but that's okay. Decent amount did. An honor, my lord. You're on. I'm sure glad I have a bit of a treasury right now. <laughs> Gee. I tell you what. I think I've had a pretty good run recently with with across the map. Good factions at least at least kind of like holding out. Not necessarily winning, but not losing either. And I kind of get the feeling that this campaign is is not gonna go that way. Um already I think Ministereth is either been sieged or gone. I was Gilead, I know Beyond's Halls. I mean look at this. So this is gone. They're still holding, what, two here, but I mean, that means they've probably lost Kalanhad as well, which means Rohan's getting hit in the rear by Mordor and Isengard. That's probably why they're losing by Isengard so quickly is because Mordor is probably pressuring the other side. I think they're also at Wood Dolgador, I saw at some point. Maybe I'm imagining that. Um, so Rohan's probably going to fall. Gondor's probably going to fall pretty quick. Beyond's Hall is under siege. Um, elves are still holding. That's good. In fact... In fact, I am a warrior, not they may be pushing out. They've, they've gathered up into a force. You. Scary looking force. We can retrain, get the weapons upgrades. You and you. Those two I want the weapons upgrades on. And then anyone else after that. I, noble sire, marching now. I, noble sire, setting a vigilant watch here. Leading I'd love for a draw out. Sire. Something to investigate. Because they have a large number of garrison units here. Mm, Ballista makes it difficult as well. I want some free upkeep here, so let's get the uh, barracks. Got to replenish units as well. Two turns on those two. That's good. Oh! 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 Dale have taken it! And we'll still grab these. I mean, this might not be a long-term solution, but at least for the time being, Dale are, are lifting. I mean, good, good job. That means we don't need to panic on recruitment here. Also means that these Ravanian, um, 
riders can go to where they're actually needed, which is over here. March. Same Aye. with you. On go back this way. We march no further today. We've marched our limit. The Ravenian Aye. riders are gonna be much more useful We've up here against uh, Gundabad. I've just heard a screaming baby go past just then. Um, the Ravenian Riders are very much useless against Rune. Rune has Cav that will just melt them and um, a lot of anti-Cav as well. My lord. Yes, sir. What is it you wish to um, You guys can have trade rights. You're at war with, with um, Isengard. You hold us at ransom. Another proposition for us then? Seems like a most reasonable deal. Good day to you. Of course, sir. I like I'm getting the 750 gold as opposed to units, because I think if I got free units, it'd just be like Northman archers, which I really don't care for. But I'm getting a bunch of like the 750 gold is much more useful for investing into infrastructure. Uh, speaking of, this should probably be low taxes, so that grows. Um, these two. It's gonna grow either way. Doesn't need to. It's already max level, so the population increases. One benefit of the population is is not really there. Okay. Osgiliath lost. Oh dear. Oh dear. Done landings. Nice. We just keep just keep picking up these missions. Your Over here. Yes, sire. Yeah. I mean, turn thirty-eight. This is why I declare. This is why I declare. When I played the Northern Dunedain and I wanted to reunite Kingdom, I was rushing the script so friggin' fast because this can happen. This can happen, and this this is why I was rushing, because um, I wanted to make it to Gondor before they lost everything. Um, now, obviously, this didn't happen. Gondor were holding the river um, when I got there in my campaign, but this is why, because this they can really lose it quite quickly. Where did that army go? Where did that army go? All right, what's in here? Do we have enough? My king. It's gonna be close. The cav are pretty much useless. You're gonna have to lift. A lot of Maddox. Yes, my king. We'd love for him to come and try and break the siege. This shall not see me. Honor, my lord. No more mercenaries. Name, we march to battle. I think it's just. We shall hold them to siege, sire. Grab some ladders just in case. I'm pretty sure it's just rams. Awaiting your orders. Something to investigate. Hmm. Have a taste of my blade. That's where the army went. My king. <sighs> if I broke the siege. I'm not convinced this army here can take them on the field. Maybe I can with the cav, actually. Aye, Lord. My king. Aye. Forward. Aye. March. We've marched our limit. Okay, we got next tier. Let's grab some of these. Um, and maybe we actually need some, some eco again. We actually need to go back for a little bit of eco. How much is that going to boost it? Significant. Um, 
It's gonna do pretty much the same thing. This one I want to keep going ham on military. The miners union, keep that going. I, my liege. Yeah, so we're not gonna spend any more on mercenaries. You can I go this way. Move out. We march no further today, my king. Because we should have potential to recruit units here. We can get these two soon as well. Okay, so we, we will have and we'll just leave those units um, in the pool ready to ready to recruit. Well in fact we'll probably recruit them and get free upkeep for them. But um then we'll sit there. These should all be free upkeep here as well. Now, because that's two that's three is five. We'll keep them. Yeah, all of them will be free upkeep. And they can just sit there and airball for now. Aye. We have enough moving along. We got be of service. Um, and I think that's probably about where we're going to call it for today. Um, there is a possibility that my recording has been corrupted. Um, so <laughs> I'm not sure about that. We'll just have to wait and see once, once, I, once I finish up. But if you're watching on YouTube, um, hopefully it's still recording. And, uh, and I'll uh, see you in next episode. Have a good one.